We welcome you to Morgantown, West Virginia, home of the Mountaineers and a great atmosphere for college football primetime presented by Cooper Tires here at Milan Pushkar Stadium. The new name of Mountaineer Field, the Orange take on number 14 in the land. And tonight's game, as every Thursday night, available on ESPN HD. Thanks to our friends at Best Buy and Phillips. And off we go on another college football weekend. Hi, everybody. Jill Arrington's on the sideline. Mike Tirico, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreet. Beautiful night for football. Well, Coach, yep. you said at the start of the season that a team that is sneaking around yeah. could get all the way to the end in the championship game would be West Virginia as the Big East BCS rep. They lost once to Virginia Tech, but tonight's game, both teams are undefeated in the league. The winner controls its own destiny to get to the BCS via the Big East route. What about the West Virginia Mountaineers so far? Well, Mike, you know, going into 2004, Virginia, West Virginia had won seven straight regular season ball games, so they were hot. I figured that. They had a nice schedule, to say the least. That was good. And also, they returned 10 guys with an offense that averaged over 37 points a game. And then they won the first four ball games, and they dropped that heartbreaker to Virginia Tech. Now, Kirk, that could probably cost them a national title shot for the game, but they could still go to the BCS. But that Syracuse team we watched on tape against Florida State, <laughs> That's a pretty good football team. Well, the difference that in that yeah. game and tonight is Syracuse had the opportunity to play at home and to carry it home. Tonight, they've got to take it on the road to a hostile environment. There are two very important keys tonight for Syracuse. Number one, offensively, their quarterback has to maintain his poise in these elements. The second thing is defensively, it's a tough task. They have to be able to slow down Rashid Marshall, the quarterback who can run and throw, and at the same time, defend Chris Henry and the deep threats in the back end. This is a tough assignment, but Syracuse does have the athletic ability to make it an interesting game. Game. Let's find out from their head coach facing his fourth top 15 program already this season, Paul Pasqualoni, standing by with Jill Arrington. Jill? Coach Pasqualoni, this is your fourth top 15 team that you face this season. What is it that you've learned from the past games that might help you today? Well, I think what you learn is uh, the margin of error is very, very slim uh, when you're playing that level of competition. So hopefully we've learned something from those three games and we can cut down on some mistakes we've made and maybe make this a better game here tonight. And coach, with the three rushing threats and a wide receiver that hurt you in the game last year, how will you contain West Virginia's offense? Well, that's a great question. You know, we're going to have to double Chris Henry sometimes. And at the same time, we can't be too light against the run either. So we're going to have to pick our spots and uh, do the best we can do with it. All right, coach. Thanks a lot. Thank Back you. to you, Mike. Okay, Jill, thank you. It is damp, but it is dry here tonight in Morgantown. Temperature in the 50s. Kickoff comes up in a few minutes. First to the studio. And good evening to Chris Fowler. Hey, good evening. The West Virginia Mountaineers take the field at home. Number 14 in the land, taking on one of its longtime rivals, the Orange from Syracuse. How important this game tonight in the Big East? Pretty simple. The winner will be undefeated and will control its own destiny no matter what you say or what you think about the quality of play in the Big East, somebody's going to go to the bowl championship series, and whoever wins tonight will be on the inside lane. Mike Tirico, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreit, Jill Arrington. Well, again, the Mountaineers are a focus for so many reasons. Lee, give me your headline, guys, to keep an eye on. Well, first of all, West Virginia is ranked number 16 in the BCS standings. The reason is wonderful offense. they got a spread offense led by their quarterback, Rashid Marshall. Now, Rashid is one of those kind of football players that he can beat you with his legs, he can beat you with his arm, and he can beat you with his mind. He's a tremendous football player. Tonight, Kirk, watch West Virginia. I think they're going to come out smoking. They're going to try to score early, try to get on top of Syracuse, and keep this crowd in the ballgame. I think the crowd is very important for West Virginia. Tonight. Well, it's huge. And, yeah. and playing on the road for Syracuse, that's going to be the key, I think, especially early in the game. Can they weather the storm? They've got some weapons of their own. Walter Reyes, when we came into this season, a lot of people expected Reyes to be one of the best true tailbacks this year in the country. Now, they've had some issues up front. They've not been able to get any continuity the way they had hoped to early in the year. They've gotten better, and the main reason is because of their quarterback now that's been inserted, Perry Patterson. Tonight, you're going to see a different look from Syracuse from what you're maybe used to years ago when they used to run the option with Donovan McNabb or Marvin Graves. Perry's more comfortable sitting in the pocket. He gets two of his weapons back and Steve Gregory and Bryce Moss, which will help him. But how Perry handles this elements will dictate if Syracuse can have a good night. And more on that down on the sideline with the aforementioned Jill Arrington. Jill? 
Yeah, that's right, Kirk. They do get back two of their added weapons today. Perry Patterson can use Rice Moss, second cousin to Randy Moss, or Steve Gregory. Now, Gregory's been out the last four games with a thigh injury. He's back. Rice Moss hasn't played yet this season with a broken bone in his hand. He played a practice a couple of days this week. He will play with a small cast on that hand, but the coaches just felt like he could have a huge impact in today's game, and it's a huge Big East matchup, so he's needed. Now, also, Pac-Man Jones. They will have to deal with him. He leads the team in tackles and in interception. A dangerous return man. He's also one of the most talkative players in college football, Mike. He's sure to get both teams riled up. Yeah, no kidding. We sat next to him yesterday at lunch. My <laughs> ear still hurts. He's a great kid, though. <clears throat> Weather tonight here in Morgantown. Always a factor late in October. 57. It feels colder than that. Kind of damp, chilly. A little haze and mist settling in. It'll be overcast, but no rain in the forecast tonight. Interesting start to this one as the Orange have won the toss and elected to receive. So Syracuse will come out on offense right away. In the white and orange of West Virginia in the home blue and gold will kick it off. After losing 51 to nothing to now 12th ranked Purdue, this looked like a lost season for Syracuse, but they certainly did show improvement against Virginia and in the loss at home by four to Florida State a dozen days ago. Last West Virginia game was on ESPN eight days ago, a 12-point conference win at Connecticut. Brad Cooper will be the kickoff man. And they're resetting the 25-second clock before we get started here. Always one of the great atmospheres here in Morgantown. Set and ready, and off we go on College Football Thursday. Eric Darty actually kicking that one off. Syracuse fakes a reverse right away, and the opening return is hit hard up to the 40-yard line by Diamond Ferry. The starting defensive back takes it out to the 42-yard line, and Jerry White tackled him there. The quarterback, as Kirk mentioned, is Perry Patterson. This is his fourth start. He's out of Pennsylvania. He did not win the starting job after coming off a double knee surgery 18 months before the season started. A true freshman, Joe Fields, won it. But Patterson stuck with it, came back, and gets the start. Damian Rhodes is the starting tailback for Syracuse. Walter Reyes has been bothered with flu-like symptoms over the last day and a half or so. And Rhodes carries for a yard to the 43. So I mentioned Rhodes and Reyes. They weren't sure even after warm-ups who was going to start. Reyes almost always does. We'll see how much we'll see him. Anoyan is the fullback in front of him. Steve Gregory returns to the lineup with veteran Jared Jones. Kovaleski, an improving tight end. Up front, NFL scouts have come in a lot to see Adam Terry. 30th consecutive start with Green, Tarullo, a big center, Franklin and Ojanaka, two improving juniors on the right side of the offensive front. Eight of one, second and nine. Patterson's first pass to Steve Gregory. First action in a month. Good action. Across the 40 to the 39. Jameel Adai pushed him out. It's a first down in a game of 19. Adai is part of a different defense. It's 3-3-5 on the Bud Light starting lineups with Keelan Dykes getting his second start with Lynch and Hardy. No superstars in this crew, folks. Just good, hard-nosed West Virginia defenders. Jerko, Adam Lenort, and Jeff Nochel getting his second start at the strong side backer. Jill told you about Adam Jones. It's the last time we'll call him Adam. He's Pac-Man with Lorello, Adai, Mims, and Adida in the back five. And Kirk and Lee will tell you why a 3-3-5 is played and what it can do. From the 38, here is Rhodes, the junior from oh, about 20 minutes away from Syracuse campus in Manliest, New York. Picked up a yard. It'll be second and nine coming up. As advertised, why a 3-3-5? 3-3-5 helps Rich Rodriguez's cause because it allows him to have more second-level players on the field. When you say second-level players, we're talking linebackers, safeties. Gets more speed on the field. You think about a 3-3-5, Lee, you think, yes. boy, you're weak up front, but as much as they blitz their linebackers, it's really almost an eight- or nine-man front. Plus, it's a new defense because it adjusts to these wide-out defenses. Offense is much better. Second and nine, first option. Look, late pitch ball on the ground. Rhodes picked it up, kept the play alive. Going to pick up a couple of blockers here, too. Damian Rhodes with speed and a lot of green. And a busted play is a Syracuse first down across the 20 and to the 19. A pickup of 18. Remember, that's not the normal starting tailback, but it worked out. 
This is what Perry Patterson has to be careful of doing in this game. When he gets to the option right there, he's got to deal it and deal it quicker. Because early in this game, with his team driving, and I know this ended up being a great play, but when you're on the road and you're a young quarterback, he's very fortunate there that that ball bounced back into the hands of his running back and they picked up some yards. Patterson, as few times as you'll see him run the option, he's got to be sound as far as the fundamentals of running the game. Rhodes had to cut out for a minute. Jeremy Sellers is now the tailback. This is just his sixth carry of the year. And he gets to the 20. So uh, obviously when we see that, we know Walter Reyes must really be suffering the effects of the flu. There he is with yep. a towel over his head. And I don't see a helmet nearby him. This is uh, their best offensive weapon with nearly 600 yards already on the season. Coming off back-to-back 1,000-yard seasons. But when Rhodes has to come out for a play and Reyes doesn't come in, you know you're not going to see much of it. Second and 11, four wide receivers essentially punch formation to the left. And Patterson feels the rush, nowhere to go, drop down. Sack of the 25 by Adina. So Lawrence Adina comes in, brings the heat and picks up a rare sack for the Mountaineers, just a seventh of the year. We keep talking about Reyes here, and it's not only important to have Reyes because he can run, but the fatigue here of Damian Rhodes got exploited. He had such a big run on that option play that in pass protection, he stepped up on Adina, and he couldn't sustain the block, and Adina got right into the quarterback. Rhodes, it'll be interesting to keep an eye on him tonight to see how long he can go without having to come out. Only one team has a poorer third down conversion rate than the Orange. Third and 16, timeout. Kirk mentioned Patterson has started a road game at Virginia. The timeout beat the delay of game flag. And Paul Pascaloni is telling his quarterback to settle down a little bit. And uh, the point we're going to make is a very hard place. And Virginia is getting to be a better atmosphere. But certainly is not as nasty here. One of the best home fields. Well, there's the story of the Syracuse season. They have done what you usually would like a team to do. They have defeated the teams they should have beaten. They haven't beaten the teams that have better talent than them. And you see three of the top 15 teams in the nation right now. And also remember one thing about Syracuse. The last ball game against Florida State was one of those kind of ball games that gives you a lot of confidence. Florida State is fifth in the BCS, one of the wonderful football teams in the nation, and they played them totally to win it that kind of play gives you confidence to move in here and play well against West Virginia and that was a big game for them to get oh. in and get ready for conference play and going on the road to Morgantown and think about it not only the late throws into the end zone but they had opportunities that they weren't able to capitalize on so out of the timeout third and 16 needing to get to the nine for a first down Patterson swings it out Rhodes can't bring it in and Syracuse will have to try a 42 or 3 yard field goal. Colin Barber is their kicker. He had two big misses against Florida State. Part of those were, were snap hold issues. Mm -hmm. Jared Jones, the holder, gave him the laces a couple of times. And when the laces were facing the kicker, both times he missed field goals. Jones, now a wide receiver, used to be a quarterback. See how he does here on this 42-yard attempt. Joe Newman is the snapper. Wide right, no good. So the West Virginia defense doesn't allow Syracuse to get closer, and Barber has missed for the third time in the last five quarters. So Syracuse decided to take the ball to start the game. They don't get any points. And the Mountaineers will come out with Rasheed Marshall, the senior quarterback out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. When West Virginia had a special season back in 1988, Major Harris was their quarterback. I'm sure if you're a football fan for a long time, you remember the Major. They still talk about him in these parts. Well, Rasheed Marshall went to the same high school in Pittsburgh. Both were not recruited by the Panthers and have thrived in Morgantown. Play action, tons of room to run. He's a really good runner. Nine to the 34. 
Coach Chick, the people are working with Rashid on the Bud Light starting lineups. Back in the lineup will be K.J. Harris later on, but Jason Colson, the sophomore, will start at running back. Chris Henry, big game against Syracuse last year with Mikael Henderson, Eddie Jackson, and Ryan Thomas. The guys up front, Tim Brown, a sixth-year player, tore his Achilles last year. He's back. Dan Moses, the sophomore next to him, might in fact be the best of the bunch. Second and one, a Colson run. First down to the 38, a gain of three. Here's the Syracuse defense. Their captain's Julian Pollard. He's the right end. James Weish on the left defensive end makes more plays. Kadir Drame and Tony Jenkins up front. At the linebacker spot, Kelvin Smith. Jerry Mackey is the great nephew of the Pro Football Hall of Famer John Mackey, who also played at Syracuse. And in the secondary, they're good on the corners with DeAndre Lakai and Tenard Jackson. Ferry and Smith, the two safeties, are actually the strength of this defense. First down from the 37. Quick toss to Colson. Tumbles across the first down line. The 49, a game 12. Luke Kane, there's part of the play, along with Anthony Smith. Mike and Kirk, this is what they call a reverse option, which means you fake the ball in the middle. That freezes the linebacker. Then, Kirk, it's an automatic pitch. It just looks like a toss play, doesn't it? Yeah, we're seeing more and more of that this year yeah. in college football. Just a quick pitch to get the speed to the outside. And because West Virginia attacks in so many different ways, it really slows the defense down. And right now, you can see Syracuse is confused, and they're guessing along with Rasheed Marshall, trying to figure out what he's doing. Two receivers, two tight ends, one back. That back is Colson. Stopped behind the line. He'll lose a yard. That's James Weiss, the guy we told you is the most talented up front. Uh, New York native makes the play. Every week, it seems like we see some version of the spread offense. And Rich Rodriguez going back to his days at Tulane with Sean King and then at Clemson and now in West Virginia. He spreads to run. Now they have the ability to do both, but you'll see a lot of running tonight from Marshall and the running backs of West Virginia. Four wide and off he goes, Kirk, with a hole up the middle. First down across the 40 and to the 37 yard line it's just like having an extra running back play call for him you know a lot of times you'll see a quarterback run the draw out of the shotgun but when you have one of your fastest players playing quarterback they run in isolation they get him back there they'll have a lead blocker and they'll follow him you can see this is something that rich rodriguez is very proud of and already they got us in the, the indie tempo as they've already called another play pushed out of bounds at the 33 the completion for pick up a four to eddie jackson yeah they want to run the offense at different tempos different speeds and the reason why they want to do that is to keep the packages of defensive personnel out of there Syracuse cannot make any substitutions so they have to play defense with every single football player without a substitution not to mention the tempo really seems to help the quarterback and the offense find their rhythm and it keeps the defense backpedaling trying to adjust after a pickup of four is second and six holds it beautiful spin off to the secondary. First and ten from the 15. Anthony Smith saved a touchdown from a kid who really wanted to play for Syracuse growing up. You know, it's almost a three-headed monster because with the quarterback and his ability to throw, we haven't seen that yet, but his ability to run, you get lulled to sleep here. Great blocking downfield by the Virginia or the uh, West Virginia receivers, but how about the athletic ability by Colson, the tailback? Jeremy Sheffy, number 65, came around the guard. He was the reason why that play was successful. Now K.J. Harris is in the game. He had a Big East record running performance earlier in the season. Feels healthy for the first time. No game there is John Mackey and Kelvin Smith stop Harris, the senior from Tampa, Florida. Now Harris was a baseball player. Spent three years in the Texas Rangers system. Went to junior college after he figured he wasn't going to go as far as he had hoped in baseball. Then came to West Virginia against East Carolina on this field in the opener he ran for 337 yards the 24th best performance by a runner in the history of college football and he can't even start on his own team Marshall faked the handoff to him will run get out of bounds of the 10 and we're gonna have third and about five coming up one of the criticisms of this kind of offense is ah, they don't have the toughness they get into the red zone the field squeezes down on them they're not going to have as much success but not this year with west virginia 19 of 20 in the red zone with 18 touchdowns 11 rushing and seven passing they know how to execute down inside here, and it's because of that ability still to run out of that spread and i also think it's the fact that rasheed marshall can break a play and score right from a broken play 
Three receivers on third and five for Marshall. Taken off. Good job by the nose tackle to force that play wide. And James Weiss makes the tackle. They are the unsung heroes of the defense, the guys in the middle. But that play forced a punt. We watched that James Weiss against Florida State. We kept saying, how big is that guy? He's 6'6", 267. And Mike, you're right, he's got wonderful quickness. Against Florida State, he outran some of those really good Florida State running backs. I was very impressed with him in the tapes. Field goal opportunity coming up for Brad Cooper. It'll be officially 29 yards. Out of the hold of George Shale. And pounded through by the senior from Bowling Green, Kentucky. Syracuse misses a field goal. The Mountaineers make one. And at home, West Virginia on the board first. Bud Light. Five and a half million dollar donation by a local businessman, Milan Pushkar, is why this is no longer known just as Mountaineer Field. Now, Milan Pushkar Stadium at Mountaineer Field. See, these guys have been playing each other a long time, and West Virginia's won back to back. And you go back to the Bobby Bowden days to find the last time that the Mountaineers beat the Orange three years in a row. Well, Darty will kick it off. Once again, a little change in the kickoff man for West Virginia. Brad Cooper's been doing it most of the season. <laughs> Another returnable kickoff with good blocking. Across the 40 again, Syracuse starts in very nice field position. Diamond Ferry, two solid returns. Under Armour advantage for the night. Coach. I'm going to change mine right away. Oh. Syracuse kickoff returns. <laughs> Not really humor. All right, Florida okay. State, they lost the ball game, but it was a positive approach because they won a lot of respect. Ten days to rest and get ready for this ball game. That's a great advantage for Syracuse. West Virginia is the home crowd. They've got to keep this crowd in the game early, which they've been able to do, and then they're playmakers, especially seeing that with their offense this year, and that'll challenge Syracuse's defense throughout the game. After the second consecutive 37-yard return by Ferry, Patterson throws complete to Damian Rhodes across midfield and to the 46-yard line, second and one coming up. Rhodes has become more of a factor in the passing game. The problem with that tonight is Walter Reyes is suffering the effects of the flu and has not played yet. And they're very thin at tailback with only Jeremy Sellers, the redshirt freshman, as the third string. Second and one. going to get there with a third and one coming up. Harry Patterson, the quarterback, Kirk, we talked to him earlier today. Give, give me your feel on what this kid's going through now in his second year, but only his fourth start. I just like to hear that he's he's made himself more committed to the offense. And talking to their coaches, I think he was a little bit taken back by Joe Fields, the true freshman who walked in and right away showed enough athletic ability that gave him the start against Purdue. I think Perry struggled with that. From that point on, when he's had his opportunities, he's worked on all the little things to impress the coaches. He's got an incredible arm. You talk about that Florida State game, Lee. Yeah. That's the thing he showed is the ability to throw the football much better than anything I've seen before at Syracuse. Well, that's backfield play action pass to the tight end, Kovaleski. Inside the 20 into the 18-yard line. They needed one. They got 28. What a play call here by George DeLeon, the offensive coordinator. This is Syracuse football at its finest. They're just going to get him out and count on the West Virginia defense, which is confused, overcommitting. Look at them all fight up to stop that third and one. They rolled the dice, took a chance, good throw, and an outstanding catch there for the first down for the Orange. And old Pac-Man Jones, the talker, came flying up there where he should have been back. <laughs> Pac-Man better quit talking and start playing. Second longest catch of Kowaleski's career. He had a 33-yarder against Temple last year. Rhodes tries to run between the tackles. Only gains a yard. How much will Rhodes go tonight? Depends on the health of Walter Reyes. Here's Jill. Syracuse trainer Tim Neal tells me that he's still just not feeling well. He's out of the game for now. I'm watching him. He's drinking a lot of fluids. He's got that towel over his head. He wants to get in the game, but you can tell he's just not feeling himself. And Jill, it's not a night that if you have a little effects of the flu that you're going to feel a lot better standing out there, right? Absolutely. You're right. It's cold and damp here this evening. Mm -hmm. Second and nine coming up. Rhodes again, miscommunication. Perry Patterson with a broken play. 
And for the second time, a broken play is about 10 yards less disastrous. But now Patterson, he's the essentially second starting quarterback. Rhodes is the second string running back, and their timing is not there right now. Well, knock on wood if you're a Syracuse fan, because two miscues deep in West Virginia territory have not, not quite backfired. I know they haven't been able to capitalize, but at least they haven't self-destructed yet. The defensive end, Jeff McClure, came in there, Mike, boom, and he knocked on everything. That was the reason why that play was stopped. The strong linebacker came into penetration. Love these fans here in Morgantown. They really help their team. Patterson screen rows. Flag down. Good call to hold. Tarullo, the center, got out there and he yanked down the DB or linebacker. He was uh, the linebacker in coverage. And now it's going to be third and about 21. First time we'll hear from Tom DeJoseph, Big East official assigned to the game tonight. <laughs> Tarullo picked up a couple of big uh, personal foul penalties the last couple of games against Florida State and Rutgers. West Virginia asking the sideline if they want the penalty. Holding sure do. on the offense, number 75, 10 yards from the previous spot, repeat third down. Especially after their field goal yeah. kicker just missed one earlier. When we talked to Jeff Castillo, the defensive coordinator from West Virginia, he said he'd love to get him. Remember, Kurt, he said he'd love to get him at third and down and long so he could bring four rushers in. Instead of the 3 3 5, he rushes four. He's done it twice in a row, and I think he's going to do it again. Yep. They like to bring pressure when yep. they get him into the obvious passing situation. They, this is a defense, even though they have three down linemen, they believe in pressure. A lot like Joe Lee yeah. Dunn in the good old days of Mississippi State, now down in Memphis. They got four rushes now. Third and 21. They bring the four. Patterson in trouble. Keeps the play alive again to Rhodes. Again incomplete on the sideline. And from here, it's going to be a 46 or 47 yard field goal attempt. Syracuse offensive line right now is getting beaten in pass pro every single time their quarterback drops back to throw. You can see the quickness and athletic ability. That West Virginia defensive line just too much. And Jeff Castile was right on target when he said going from three Colin to Parker four gives him much more pressure. Good calls by Jeff Castile, the defensive coordinator. This would equal a season long of 46 yards for Colin Barber out of the Jared Jones hole. Block. Race for the ball. Barber, the kicker, trying to pick it up. The Mountaineers will take over in great field position at the West at the Syracuse 38. Michael Lorello got in there. He had a touchdown interception against UConn and comes up with a big block there. There's a penalty marker on the back end of the entire recovery scrum. Sideline warning on the Syracuse bench. Another week that we saw somebody run into someone on the bench. This time it wasn't a player in the Miami-Louisville game. It was that. A referee here. I think Lorello, 23, gets there. Yeah, Lorello just comes right through a gap. He, he does a little hop step, but he gets right through there. Ball hits him in the chest. Yes. I mean, that's, we'd like to say it's good technique. It's just <laughs> poor blocking. Well, you know what happens? Every time it's a long field goal, the kicker has a tendency to hit it real hard and doesn't get enough height yeah. right away. That's why people don't like long fields yeah. sometimes. That didn't they, they, they they jump you right through the gap. You'd have to hit a 56-degree <laughs> wedge to get it over yeah. that guy. Yeah, that time, that was just Jeez. Oh, blocking, was blocking miscue. First and 10, West Virginia. It'll be first and 15 instead. So the early story of this game is as uh, the conversation begins, not unknown to happen in this long time series. False start. Offense, number five. Five yard penalty. First down. Syracuse, by the way, has gotten to the West Virginia 19 and 17. And they have no points to show for it. And one of the reasons they've done it is two great kickoff returns. They really haven't hurt the West Virginia defense. They had two long kickoff returns and two broken plays. To, to make it all the way down there. It's a nice drive by the Mountaineers. They moved it at will until they got inside the red zone. First and 15, and here comes K.J. Harris. Nice move to cut it back. Has some blockers. 
to the 24. First down. Diamond Ferry made the tackle. DeAndre Lakai, the cornerback, was blocked, allowing a short game to become 21. Ha! Number two, Rashid Marshall. Watch him. He'll hand the ball off here to KJ. But watch, keep your eye on number two, right? The left hand's part of your picture right here. He gets in the way, at least, of the Syracuse men. Kurt, yeah. he didn't kill him. No, but he's he, right. he got in the way. Right. It looked like a normal quarterback block. Yeah, he went low. He's somewhere. Well, he don't... Go low, fake high. Stay healthy. Not near his 80 rushing yards. Marshall's pass is incomplete. It was ruled a forward pass intended for Eddie Jackson. His senior has been bothered by hamstring problems. He, if he's familiar to those of you out in the Northwest, he used to be at Washington, transferred here. The idea of these first 12 plays so far for West Virginia, we, again, the spread to run. They're fifth in the nation in rushing. 12 plays, they've run the football 10 times. So it's whether it's a Marshall scrambling or a design play for him to run or the tailbacks to run. They obviously want to attack Syracuse early in this game with running the football. The backup quarterback, Charles Hales, is in. The pass is thrown that way, but it's wide open to the five, and Henry takes it in. Chris Henry, West Virginia touchdown. This is just a simple route right here to Henry, and with all that running, what happens is it makes that defense get very wary of Marshall and his running, and it sets things up later in the game, and in that case, Henry makes a heck of a play and shows the speed that he has in the open field. And the left guard, Dan Moses, was out there, and he made the block that allowed Henry to score the touchdown. 76, Dan Moses. Brad Cooper adds the extra point, and the Mountaineers are two for two. Eighth touchdown of the year for the man from Louisiana, Chris Henry. West Virginia's blocked field goal turns into a touchdown. I'll read. West Virginia up quickly, 10-0. A blocked field goal and a missed field goal. The story so far. And West Virginia's offense has been dominant here in the early going with 107 yards. On the first 13 plays. Well, after two tries with Darty, it'll be yeah. Brad Cooper back to kick it off. This is their best play by four right here. Syracuse, you mean? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. This could be a good Maybe they take this one all the way back. Diamond Ferry from the 18. And the starting yeah. safety, well covered on the shorter kickoff. He brings it out to the 32. Syracuse in a big early hole. See if they can put points on the board when you come back to Morgantown. Weeks. PN's College Football Primetime is presented by Cooper Tires Ultimate Bowl Tour. Go to a Cooper dealer near you or visit ultimatebowltour.com to enter. And in part by Singular Wireless. That Mountaineer statue on the West Virginia campus, local lore goes that it was modeled after Jerry West, the NBA great who was a star here in West Virginia. Mr. Logo, of course, the NBA logo is, although nobody officially admits to it, modeled after the great Jerry West as well. From the 35, first down run with Damian Rhodes for a yard to the 36-yard line. Defensive coordinator Jeff Castile. I was very impressed with him, Kirk, with his intensity. He's from Penn City, West Virginia. He was telling us a town of what? 3,000 people? Said, yeah. Said, yeah, he said about 3,000. It used to be 3,000. <laughs> I yeah. like the way I like the way he was intense, but I also like the fact that he brought his family into the office to meet us. Wasn't that nice? Yeah. I and mean, these guys got a really yeah, good program. Jake. Yeah, Jake, just, just like you, yeah, Jake. Yeah. Just like that's how you remembered his name. That's right. You liked him because there were cookies in his office, Lee. <laughs> cookies, candy, everything. Second down, Patterson to Sellers, the third string running back. <laughs> Jeremy out of Maryland with the game, but only a couple of yards. I, Sorry, real I quick, I, yeah. I just got to take people behind the scenes for a Good. second. LC, the Sunshine Scooter. Yeah. Yes. Whenever we, Chris Fowler back in the studio, appreciate this. Whenever oh, we travel around the country, one thing that the scooter likes to do is he's got his satchel, and in that satchel, yeah, there's sometimes candy, sometimes uh -huh. cookies, sometimes water. He took it to a whole different level this week, Chris. He went into Rich Rodriguez's office this and he right. offered us a drink, and he said, "Well, if you're offering." I'll take another water and a Coke and a 
Yeah, Dr. Cameron. I'll, yeah, I'll just keep loading up here. You may want to hang on to that story. We might need it later. <laughs> Third and six. Patterson has room to run, directing traffic. Good job by the West Virginia defense to shut that play down very quickly. Anthony Mims came off the corner when he saw Patterson take off, and it's a kick away, three and out, Syracuse. Well, sir, I think Syracuse is going to have to start throwing, not only because they're down, but on first and ten. When they get down into third and seven, third and eight, the coverage is good, but the pressure has been outstanding. That combination, it, obviously, you know what's coming, Lee. I think George yeah. Gillione take a few more chances on first and ten and try to catch West Virginia in that 3-3-5. Three, three, Here's the man. Adam Pacman Jones for the return. The kicker, Brendan Carney, is a big leg, sometimes slow to get a kick off. That got blocked. Carney's going to pick it up and try to run. He'll be tackled. There were three Syracuse players standing there looking at each other. I mean, that is pathetic. Great block by the Mountaineers. And they'll take over after the Tandai Smith block inside the 25. I mean, what are these three guys watching? You know what's tough to do? It's tough to block a punt when you're returning it. When you have a return on, Thank but, but uh, against this funky formation, West Virginia was able to bring a guy oh. in right by everybody. He just ran right by everybody. That's the formation they run all the time. You know, right. That was invented Wait. by Ben Schwartzwaller. That's called a Syracuse run, but I guarantee you, old Ben just rolled over his grave. What you do is you step out and you touch the guy at least. Oh, no. I mean, that could kill him. The kicking game right now could absolutely destroy this Syracuse team. From the 23, Colson on the run inside the 15 and down to the 13-yard line. Pick up a 10. Let me tell you, I've coached some games like this, and if you're away from home and you got a hungry team like West Virginia and they want to look good and you start making mistakes, sweetheart, it starts going, and he ding, he ding, he ding. He ding. That scoreboard starts going, click, click, click. Avalanche. Oh, I'm telling you. It's, it's coming. If you can see it, you can yep. feel it. <clears throat> and then when West Virginia has the ball, they've run 14 plays. Almost half of them have been for 10 or more yards here tonight. First and 10 from the 13. Colson again. This time he's stopped by Chris Forner. Over the penalty marker comes in. And James Weish also there as well. A five yard oh. face mask. We'll make it first and five. Well, college football Saturday presented by Crestor on ESPN. New Nice Northwestern against unbeaten Wisconsin. Yeah, every game's a must for them. And I can watch that game, but maybe we can put this game back on the Miami Louisville game from last week. You all be down in Raleigh as NC State gets to host the Canes. It's also available on ESPN HD. You can ring up your cable operator, Direct TV, or the Dish Network to find more about that. Miami, of course, beat Louisville, NC State coming off a win over Maryland on Saturday. I'm going to bring up that stat Kirk mentioned before. 19 to 20, right, Kirk? Yeah. 11 runs, seven passes, one field. The reason is the quarterback's a runner. Reverse look. They keep it with the tailback. They call him a super back, whether it's Colson or K.J. Harris. It's Colson that time, stopped by James Weiss. Now bring us to the end of quarter number one. So the Mountaineers... <laughs> Coming off the win at Connecticut eight days ago by 12. Their only loss was to Virginia Tech by six. Trying to hold home field and keep alive their dreams of playing in the BCS. Dominant opening quarter. They lead 10-0. They're driving for more. Quarter number two here from Morgantown on College Football Primetime, presented by Cooper Tires. Mike Tarico, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreet, Jill Arrington with you. A little early for Halloween there, buddy. West Virginia trying to go up 13 or 17 to nothing here, early second. K.J. Harris runs it up the middle and gets just a couple of yards. Well, third, they need to get to the three for a first down and go three more to get a touchdown. Pretty dominant opening quarter yeah. from West Virginia. Well, remember, Syracuse has been giving up 180 yards on the ground to everybody. So they just figured they could run the ball at him, Kirk, and I think they've got good success doing it already. Mm. And Marshall rolls, has help, has blockers, but can't 
get the first down. Diamond Ferry brought him down at the five, and we'll see if West Virginia goes fourth and two or kicks a field goal. You want my opinion? Yeah, sure, why not? I'd go for it. Okay, Kirk. Uh, Diamond Ferry here, guys. He made a play, but he, he hogtied, but yeah. he got lucky. His hand didn't get up there close enough to the face mask. They're going to force the field goal. Yeah, I'd, I'll tell you why I'd go for it. It's because of the fact I think you could stick a dagger in their heart right now if you make it. And if you don't, you leave the ball on a seven-yard line. And three points is nothing. 13. They're going to score at least 40 tonight the way they're going. <laughs> and the way their defense is playing. Yeah, that's keep, put them in a hole. So I'm saying not second guess. Right. I'm just telling you. First guess. First guess. Cooper good from 29. Missed from 23. I say nothing. <laughs> you don't have to. You just did. <laughs> so Syracuse right. dodges a huge. <laughs> <laughs> and it remains 10 nothing. Check out the kick here. You know, I, everything looked fine. Well, I know, but the situation, like, Kirk, psychologically, you know, I'm just saying, way, as you know, far as he's missed it. He just missed it. But the thing about it is, we have a chance to stick a team like Syracuse in the heart yeah, with actually, a dagger. Yep. And if you don't stick it in the heart with a dagger, you leave them stay around longer. They hang around, they eat it out, they eat it out. Boom. Yep. Did you see that kick? Yeah, that was, kick that was going like a punt. That was the, that was that the nice. old knuckle curve there. No, no, it wasn't know, going end over end like most placement kicks do. That's something new to me. <laughs> Seen a lot of nice kicking game stuff so far here tonight. Oh, hello. First and ten, the orange take over at the 20. And Damian Rhodes has a couple of blockers. Runs right into them. After a gain of just three, seconds and seven. Coming up. Speaking of special teams, as we fire up the game track, got some issues. Got a field goal block that led to a touchdown. And Tommy Harris just kind of had a good view of Thundai Smith as he walked by for the punt block. And Rashid Marshall has been very good as the Mountaineers' low touchdown was scored there by Chris Henry, who had two against Syracuse last year. Pick up a three, second and seven. And here's Rhodes again. Tries to get to that next level. He got a face mask. He was out of bounds at the 26. Marked at the 27, but a face mask flag is going to extend this past the 30. Good old Pac-Man Jones. Talkative but talented cornerback who's the top tackler on this team. Flag for the five-yarder. Remember he had his coming out party. Last year when we were down at the Orange Bowl on a Thursday mm -hmm. night against Kellen Winslow. Five yard face mask on the defense. First down. It was number nine. Those two could talk uh, forever between the two of them. But I, th this is just clearly just a five yard face mask here. Pac-Man's going to be all over the field tonight. What, what is great about Pac-Man Jones is his willingness to come out and make a tackle. He's the number one tackler on this team, but he also has the ability to be athletic enough and cover in man-to-man. -man. He's a very special player. So you got an eight-man front here. You've got to try to mix in some throws on first and ten. Well, fullback, Hanoyan. Greg's a senior out of Massachusetts from Seacon. Kirk, go back and explain first the defense and then why you need to throw to get him out of it. Well, there are eight guys right here. You have soft corners on the outside on both sides. I just think just to mix it up, it might be good to try to get away from trying to pound it in there because just the advantage that West Virginia has with the numbers early in this game. Just I'm not saying go strictly yeah. to throwing, but mix in some pass on first and You ten. made an excellent point before. First and ten throw it. Yep. Don't wait till third and one. Yeah. Second and nine, two tight ends, one back. And Patterson, good ball fake, but threw it a little bit too early to get it to Jared Jones, who was crossing in the middle and was open around the 45. The thing about a young quarterback with a big arm like Perry Patterson, who's still trying to feel his way and try to get comfortable and get confident with each game out, is it's all about his technique. And you can almost see him there. Just, just pushing the ball through and right away as soon as he let go of that ball you can tell he didn't feel very good about it the fans become a 12th man on every third down it's third and nine good blitz pickup underneath for Gregory incomplete Rhodes did a great job that time of picking up the blitzer, but the connection to Patterson and Gregory didn't work. Damian Rhodes did a good thing there by picking up this blitzing linebacker, but watch the technique. You always teach a guy to go for the ankles and knees right there. 
That makes the guy flip over. Damian Rhodes made a good play there, first with recognition and second with technique. Good play by Damian Rhodes, but the pressure on Patterson was too much. Let's see if uh, Brandon Carney can get a punt off here. Again, I told you, he's very tall. He's worked on his release time. He's slow getting rid of it. He got rough there. Roughing the kicker will be called. Pac-Man lets it go. And it is a touchback. West Virginia trying to shake those three Syracuse guys up. I don't know if Carney's going to take the flag home as a souvenir. But they will pick up a first down and erase the 67-yard punt. I don't know why they sent all those guys after. They did better by just sending one. <laughs> Rubbing the kicker. 36 on the defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Leon Price is flagged. They blocked the punt earlier in the game by setting up. <laughs> they set up a return. This, this is, you shouldn't do this. There's too many guys. Those guys are blocked. Just send one guy and sneak around a chicken coop. That's they, they, the right. they did Boom. it successfully that first time. But if you're going to bring three or four guys in one area, you probably don't want to bring them right up the middle there where the, that wedge is kind of set up. Let's see if they... See what kind of play calling we get here on first to ten. A good field position at the West Virginia 47. Again, it's out of two tight ends and one back. Fake the option left, come back to the right, and the toss to Rhodes. Gets out to the 46-yard line. Well, you saw that sign that uh, makes us chuckle, but uh, certainly doesn't make Rich Rodriguez chuckle. Penalties. Most yards per that's a hundred yards that's a whole field of game that you give a team and 25 to the bad tonight they get the gold star in their paper for creativity I was a fan who knows what's going on Rhodes So let's see, out of, uh, what, 23 plays, 15 have been runs, and one out of every five, the quarterback can't get it to the running back. That's not good. Yeah, and we talked with Paul Pascalone. He taught the one thing we learned from the Florida State game is if we do everything perfectly on offense, then we can execute. But it's we don't have a bunch of superstars on this team, guys. We have to do everything perfectly. That means the handoffs. That means the blocking. That means lack of penalties. Quarterback getting back and throwing the football on time. If we can do all the little things right, we've got a chance. And here in the early going, that's it's not been the case. Looks like a different team from a couple weeks ago. Jeff Castile, defensive coordinator, Virginia Tech. This, I mean, for West Virginia, this is a perfect situation for him right now. Third and long. And it gets longer with a delay of game flag. <laughs> delay. Number 10 on the offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. Well, for a team that uh, needs to be playing with desperation, just one, have a successful season, two, to help save their coach's job, which was publicly brought onto the hot seat by the athletic director last year after the season. This wouldn't exactly be the 20 minutes that you would have uh, decided to put out there for a sample. Syracuse has got to be very careful not to have a turnover here. Third and 13. Patterson throws underneath it for the third time. One of those crossing routes is incomplete. It was intended for Jared Jones. Guys are running wide open. They're just uh, not getting the ball. This looks like the Perry Patterson of early in the year against Rutgers and some of the other teams he played against where he just can't get comfortable back there. Doesn't look like he's playing with any confidence at all. And you know, when, when you're a quarterback like that, sometimes it's just one throw to get you in sync. One play can get you going, but right now he is back there and he is struggling. He's really forcing things. Brendan did party to punch it. Pac-Man from the 15. Yeah, he gets through there. Wow. Jones still going. <laughs> Great hustle on his return. Out to the 25-yard line. Well, West Virginia, oh, you have a penalty marker down. Let's see. Do we have a flag? Mm -hmm. Nope. Just a beanbag. No flag. All right. All right. So West Virginia will take over from its own 25. The top five. Did it yeah. change at all in the last week? <laughs> Remember now. I change all the time. Okay, okay, but it's we're coming back with it. We're not going to give it right now. Not right oh, now. That's I, the I made tease. a mistake last That's week. That's the tease. Better now. Sorry. Right back. We'll come back. That's no fun this week. Much better. It's good. 
Katie with West Virginia leading 10 nothing here. We go farther south this weekend for the Funai Classic at the Walt Disney World Resort where VJ Singh's trying to get win nine in his unbelievable 2004 season. Had a good day today. He's in contention. Coverage continues tomorrow and Saturday on ESPN. Sunday coverage on ABC. Rasheed Marshall loading up, sending it deep downfield. Knocked down. Incomplete. DeAndre Lakai out of California had the coverage. As we're talking, boys, the top five here for this week. What's going on with the teams at the top of your poll, sir? Well, first of all, I have USC number one. I think they've beaten four pretty good football teams. I have Auburn two. I have Oklahoma three, Miami four, and Florida State five. I have Oklahoma still up at number one. Main reason is because of the way they play defense. USC, great performance with Dwayne Jarrett stepping up. Auburn at three, getting better each week. Miami with a big showdown, and here yep. comes Florida State now. Yep, you got here they the, come, here sneaking they come. around, looking good. This is a second down run up the middle, and Colson makes a game. Jason's having a very good day so far. Yeah, Florida State victory over Virginia was very impressive last Saturday night. They, they definitely, defensively, yep. obviously, are there, but I, uh, the offense is the story now with Wyatt Sexton. And just for, for our friends in Wisconsin and Utah and Boise, why would you put one loss Florida State ahead of those three undefeated teams? Because they play better football teams than the others. That's why. And, and, and just they, seeing them all oh, and watching them, I understand the one loss, but just watching them play, I think Florida State's a, a complete team now that they're playing better on offense and their Start. defense is 81 on the offense. As good as Wisconsin has penalty. been on defense, Second I don't think down. Florida State has to step back and, and take a back seat to what Wisconsin can do. Yeah, it, it becomes an interesting point. Uh, Chris Fowler raised his ESPN.com article every Thursday. Yeah. And uh, no, no, I'm being serious. I'm going to be fine. Chris raised a good point. At what point will people start reassessing if those teams go undefeated that a Utah would get moved up ahead of a one loss team? It's very, very early in the process. We'll talk about the whole BCS poll coming out later. But it, it's just too early, Mike. I mean, there's too many combinations could happen. Yeah. I haven't figured. There's no question in my mind. We'll talk about it Saturday. USC is going to play Auburn in the national title game. Could happen. Anything could With happen. an undefeated Oklahoma not playing in it. Could happen. I mean, crazy. That flag made it first and 15. Marshall looked long. It was covered. Great speed to do this. Gets out of bounds after a gain of just a couple of yards. The other thing that we're not even talking about here, everybody gets so caught up in the Utahs of the world, is the upsets that we're going to, it's going to happen. We're eventually going to see upsets along the way. And, Lee, you touched on Oklahoma, whether they're undefeated. They've still got to go to Texas A&M and yep. Oklahoma State. Auburn's got some big games coming up. So there are, there are things that will happen in these next five weeks. First look at the BCS standings presented by Allstate. You see Utah more credibility there. Sure. And obviously the Oklahoma issue was the one that raised all eyebrows. And perhaps we'll have a chance to talk more about that as the night goes on. Here it is, second and 12. West Virginia backed up by that penalty. And Harris unable to get past the line of scrimmage. The Mountaineer offense has slowed down from its great opening quarter pace. Talked about Ka Harris earlier, how he's a baseball player, more mature guy at age 25. He was really frustrated about his injury status last week. He didn't play against Connecticut after hurting his hamstring earlier in the year, then hurt his knee and ankle in a game where he carried it a lot against Maryland and didn't practice, could not go. And then KJ set that. You see the Central Florida game where he played two. The Maryland big numbers there. Wasn't the same after that. And Pernell Williams, a freshman, came in and looked great against UConn in the second half. So Harris has kind of been put on notice. Now he says he's feeling better. And Syracuse has done a nice job with Tony Jenkins, the nose tackle, and James Weish hemming in Marshall and will force a punt. I want to remind you of something that I talked about earlier. The ball was on the seven with fourth and one and a half, and they tried to field goal. Since that point, they lost the momentum. They haven't got the juice because they went on the negative side. They should have kept sticking that dagger in Syracuse and putting the pressure on them. Now, I don't know. They, the lead in Syracuse hang around. Phil Brady with the kick. Turned out to the 29 yard line. A return of 7 yards on that one after the kick of 41. Marcus Clayton on the punt return. We'll talk about the Big East and Syracuse and West Virginia and the whole BCS situation with this league when we come back. Wallace looks like a blowout. IGN calls it the most complete hoops game on the market. ESPN NBA 2K5. Rated everyone.
introducing the new SLK 350. Take it for a test drive today at your local authorized Mercedes-Benz dealer. You can put a new twist in your toolbox for more torque in tight spaces, or add a gripping idea for flawless accuracy and finishes. You can find the latest, most breakthrough tool innovations only at the Home Depot, like the Ryobi One Plus system, the only customizable combo tool kit with a universal battery. More people update their toolboxes at America's largest toolbox, the Home Depot. You can do it, we can help. Ooh, I like steak and chicken. I like the grilled shrimp, please. I like skillet sensations. They're back at Applebee's. Eating good in the neighborhood. Yeah. It's cool with your freak to the beat. Techniques. West Virginia was the preseason pick in the Big East, which lost its two heavyweights, Virginia Tech and Miami, when uh, raided, quote unquote, by the ACC. With Boston College leaving next year. And when you talk about the BCS standings, which we showed you earlier, you have to drop down to number 20 until you see the first Big East team, West Virginia. And the BCS average is now compiled by both polls. And a compilation of the computer rankings. Perry Patterson and Syracuse take over on first down. Everything's covered. He doesn't really like to run, but he kind of have to sometimes, and he dances out of bounds there at the 32-yard line. You know, Mike Trangisi, the commissioner of the Big East, who was the person coordinating the BCS for all the conference commissioners the last couple of years, he said it on the very first words of his address at Big East Media Day. This is a transition year for this league. When Louisville, Cincinnati, South Florida coming in, Temple is evicted, essentially, from the league after this year. And now they've got to find who are going to be the programs that can play at the highest level to keep a BCS berth down the line. And it's raised a lot of issues because, let's face it, the quality and depth of this league doesn't compare to the other BCS leagues right now. You know, and we've talked about this all season long. I, I think it's unfair to some of these other conferences that are on the outside. Patterson incomplete. He bounced one. That, by the way, guys, is Rice Moss. That's the first play on the field for the true freshman receiver Jill talked about earlier is a cousin of Randy Moss. And he got open, but they just didn't get it to him. Now, uh, to this Big East BCS issue, they're in the BCS as an automatic champion getting in for four years, but the performance will be watched. You know, the standards talk about you have to be in the, big, in the top 12 over four years to stay and get the automatic bid. Those standards are going to be readjusted here in the next year or so. I think the only reason they're in there is because of respect for Mike Transisi. I think they have a lot of respect for him and let him stay in there because of him. This is third down. Patterson's throw is caught at the 40 by Fontenette. And the senior out of Rochester will pick up the first down and a gain of seven yards. Whether it's respect for Mike Trangisi, which I, I tend to agree with you. He was one of the founding fathers. He was heavily involved with all the decisions. But the reality is this conference now, if you compare it to the other B BCS conferences, is not comparable. It's not fair to the Mountain West or the WAC or Conference USA who have teams that are very competitive, maybe have even more depth in their conference in the Big East. Now you get Louisville in here next year, and that's going to add one other team. Here is Rhodes in the 40. Wonderful ankle tackle by Adam Lenort, the senior out of Oil City, Pennsylvania, the middle linebacker who's been fighting a high ankle sprain. While we have a second, here's Jim. Well, I just keep keeping my eye on Walter Reyes. I know they want him on the field. He wants to be on the field, but right now he's got a big blue coat on. He's trying to stay warm and keep those chills to a minimum. The guy's just not feeling good enough to get out there and play. All right, Jill, so we'll uh, keep an eye, see if he comes back. And usually when you have the flu, you don't have a ton of energy or flu-like symptoms. Maybe they're trying to reserve whatever they can to get him in the second half. Rhodes is not hitting any holes right now with a lot of speed. There he goes down the sideline, out of bounds at the 44. You bring Louisville in, you have Louisville and West Virginia. But with Pitt right now down and Syracuse down, mm -hmm. How do you how do you look the the whack of the Mountain uh, Mountain West conferences in the eye or Conference USA in the eye and say hey we still have played better brand of football we still have more depth in our conference and I respect the fact that the Big East was there from the beginning 
So you have to have some kind of stipulation for them. But look at that conference and compare it to the SEC or the Big Ten or the Pac-10 or Big 12 or ACC. I've got an idea of how I think. I like your idea. Let's we'll talk about it in the second half. Okay. The right. guys are going to talk about it at halftime. So I want to hear what they have to say in the studio. Okay. And then we'll address it again in the second half. I like your idea. I think your idea trumps anything. Play clock running down. Syracuse had to take a timeout. They have third and five coming up. They picked up the last third down. Need to get something going offensively. Only 97 yards in 29 plays. And a couple of kicking game mistakes as well. SLK 350. See it in 360 degrees yourself at your local authorized Mercedes-Benz dealer. With NFL Sunday Ticket from DirecTV, you can go everywhere the action is. Play with that! Come on, two out of three. Simon says, arms out. Good. Nachos. From stadium to stadium. Whoa. All around the league. Got it. Check out the most games each and every Sunday with NFL Sunday Ticket, only from DirecTV. This is the coolest thing. I just got a DirecTV DVR with you. This is a sports fan's dream. I'm watching the game. A slam dunk to the rafters. Instant replay button. You gotta see it again. I'm the referee. So boom. See that nice linebacker hit on that wide receiver. You can see it over and over again. Instant replay. Live television. Hello? Wish list is one of the best things. It's like a search engine. You put in their names, Chicago Bears, New England Patriots, it'll find you. Every game for the whole season. One button doesn't get any better than that. Direct TV DVR. Call 1-866-GET-A-DVR for this special offer. ESPN's College Football Prime Time. Brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. Located on the web at MBUSA.com. And the Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. Woodburn Hall on the downtown campus in Morgantown. This uh, city nestled among the mountains of northern West Virginia. That's 70 miles from Pittsburgh. Down I-79. 50,000 live here. Very nice waterfront community as well. Third and five. Patterson. Throws for the first down into West Virginia territory. And Jared Jones, senior, used to be a quarterback, very dependable receiver. And that's two third down pickups for the arms. Now that was one of the few times that Perry Patterson has set his feet and watch him as we see the replay. He'll step forward and drill it. No pushing it, drilling it. Watch him now right now. He'll step back, keep your eye on number 10. Now watch him step forward and drill it. That's better than that push. <laughs> yeah, he's been pushing yeah, a lot today. Pushing, yeah. Rhodes from the 44 cannot get out of the arm tackle of Jason Hardy. Well, tonight for Syracuse to get back into this game and get anything going on offense, it's all about Perry Patterson. I mean, it, right now with, with Walter Reyes on the sideline, with West Virginia committing eight or nine guys to the line of scrimmage, it's going to come down to Patterson's ability to find his rhythm and find some receivers downfield. They've been open. He's missed four or five, maybe six mm -hmm. different receivers downfield to make some big plays in his passing game. I'm going to correct myself. Keelan Dykes, 96, not Hardy, 95, made the tackle. I can't tell the difference between the fives and the sixes in their numbers. I'll just guess with you here. Rice Moss is in the game, second and 12. Here is Patterson. He does have time again. He's got a receiver open in the middle. He's taking off instead, and he's going down. Back at midfield, loss of four. And one guy break open only for a moment. Unfair to say the guy was really open downfield. But if you're going to scramble, you got to go. Well, it's also great coverage downfield. Rice Moss, the freshman they're trying to get the ball to. This is a coverage sack. But the difference between what we've seen in the past from Syracuse and, and now is they used to have a quarterback that would look at that coverage and get upfield and make something happen. Now, with Perry Patterson, they don't have that ability. They've become more one-dimensional in their passing game than what they used to used to have years and years at Syracuse. Adam Lenore 
the 6'4", 230 linebacker, blitz, blitz in the middle, and still caught Patterson from the eye. That was a great play by Lenore. Corner blitz, pass thrown, caught by Fontenet. Good job behind the blitz for Lawrence Adina to come up and make the play. The, bound, the bandit safety will force a punt. Lee, you and I talk about yeah. side adjusts all the time, and a lot of offense has been able to adjust to avoid this. This is a side adjust on third and, what was it, 15? This, as a Syracuse offense, you've got to try to call a play that in case they do blitz, you're not forced to throw the side adjust. You have some kind of answer to pick up that blitz to allow you to throw the ball downfield as opposed to throwing that quick three-step, get rid of it, five-yard gain. Now it's fourth and ten. Fourth and nine, another punt from Carney. His great hang time on his kicks. This one's going to bounce into the end zone. So the net is only 24 on a kick that was 44. West Virginia hasn't had the ball very often. Ten fewer plays, eight fewer minutes. Where it's most important, they have ten more points. Sharp Aquas Liquid Crystal Television. Greater detail reveals all. TC, aka Tender Crisp. Spicy, aka Spicy Tender Crisp. The Golden Bird TC versus the Red Hot Spicy. Está rojo, está rojo de caliente. Two chickens, one quest. Burger King presents the Chicken Sandwich World Championship. See who wins free on Direct TV. Tender Crisp, spicy Tender Crisp. Decide which one's best at Burger King now. Jeans make all the difference. Introducing Genworth Financial, built on GE Heritage, now creating our own legacy. So West Virginia on top by 10 here on College Football Primetime, presented by Cooper Tires. Game the Mountaineers could be leading by a lot more because they've had great opportunities. However, Syracuse has held the ball a little bit more often and done less with it. From the 20. First down handoff again it is Jason Colson out to the 25 and Jill Arrington has more on Colson. Well Jason Colson grew up an orange fan. He always wanted to play for Syracuse. However Syracuse did not see him as their running back material. So he's at West Virginia. He's making a name for himself and he told me at lunch this week he said I am ready to show these guys up close and personal what they missed out on. He downed two appetizers two entrees and a dessert. You think he's got a little bit behind that run guys. <laughs> that was yesterday at lunch, second and five. There he goes again, looking for a little dessert here. Hmm. To the 43, first down. It's kind of a silent assassin. Joe, I, talking to him, I got that same feel that not only did Syracuse offer, he verbaled to Syracuse, but he's, when, when the Syracuse coaches told him they didn't think that he had that ability to be a tailback at their school, they wanted him as a safety. He said, I'm out of here. I'm going to Morgantown. And he brings the toughness. What's interesting is Colson's 215 pounds. K.J. Harris is 245 pounds. But it's Colson that runs with more power. Harris, after seeing that big run by Colson, tries to respond. And Ryan LaCasse, the junior out of Stockton, Mass, brings him down for midfield strike. There's nothing like competition to get players to play hard. Oh, K.J., he didn't play much last week. But then Williams and Colson started running. All of a sudden, his hamstring got better. Remember, Rod Kubik yep. tried to said, he started looking good. <laughs> right. There is nothing like competition to make football players play harder and come off the injury list, I might add. Second and statistically a long two is needed. Design run, Marshall. Kadir Drame, the defensive tackle, got a hand on him, but Marshall was able to get free and get the first down at the 45-yard line. 
I think this is the biggest difference in Marshall's game. He's just going to follow K.J. Harris here. This is like, again, an isolation block. Harris needs to come here to pick up the block if he can. He had to go around the guard that time, which slowed the play down. Usually it's a quick hitter, and it goes right up inside the between the center and the guard. That time they had to pop it to the outside. Still enough to pick up that first. Mount Peters have 144 rushing yards. They've looked good, except for that inability to get it in the end zone on the drive down at the five a moment ago. Harris a run down to 42. Rashid Marshall is an opportunity to set some ironic Big East history tonight with eight yards. He will pass Donovan McNabb as the all-time leading rusher as a quarterback in the Big East. Look at the law for Henry again. Couldn't pull it in. That was a quick tempo play. Syracuse was running defenders in and out. Henry tried to hit the home run. Diamond Ferry and DeAndre Lakai covered. That was a nice play by Marshall that time. But I tell you what, Ferry did a really good job of coming back. And you watch him come from the bottom pitch right there and just strips the ball. That was fair legal play of Great stripping play. the football sure was. right there. That was a nice play. It saved the touchdown right there. And for a safety who's still trying to adjust to playing safety as a former running back, that was outstanding of getting his hand in there and, and at the very last second yeah. ripping that ball out of Henry's hands. Lakai, who was bothered by a hamstring pull a little bit before and then during the Florida State game, is shaken up. And Tim Neal, the athletic trainer from Syracuse, out there checking him out. As they look at the junior from Los Angeles, we are the opposite end of the world from L.A. We're in Morgantown, West Virginia, with the Mountaineers on top by a count of 10 nothing, looking to improve to six and one and win for the third consecutive time in this series. And you see, you talk all about their spread offense, their spread offense. Their spread has shown the ability to run, and they've run it very well tonight. As Lakai comes off, he doesn't look very good there with the players back on the field for this third and seven here at the 42. Four receivers for West Virginia. Marshall has nothing downfield. Trying to make something happen, threw it away, got it over the line of scrimmage. Perfectly legal. We have a penalty marker down back where the pocket was. Now let's see what that call is. Scrambled out of the tackle box, got the ball past the line of scrimmage, and it is a penalty on West Virginia. Now that we have a second, let's visit with Chris Fowler, see what's coming up at halftime. Chris? It is the Pontiac High Performance Report. Mike Trev and Mark will join me. We'll see whether Brock Berlin can get it done against the top-ranked defense, see if Orton and Purdue can bounce back against Michigan, and we'll preview Louisville against South Florida tomorrow night. I want to find out if Chuck O'Model's going to punt the ball to Devin Hester of Miami. That's that's one thing I want to talk about. In a game about. not a lot of people are talking about. How about Texas, Texas Tech? Once again, last year, a great game. Another good game this year. That's all coming up at halftime for the battle for the Floyd Ben Schwartzwalder Trophy. When they fight for that trophy, you just you toss out get the out records, away. guys. Yeah, pretty much. You send him right out, right out the window there. You're right, Chris. We'll talk about uh, that trophy and the man it's named for later. West Virginia will kick it away here on fourth down. Hit when he caught it. We have whistles. West Virginia recovering a muffed punt, which cannot be advanced at the 20-yard line. All the traffic around Clayton, and he could not pull it in, and the Mountaineers will take over at the 20. Somebody bumped into Clayton. Yeah. I think it was his own man. I was going to say, all the traffic, West Virginia, it looked like, did a pretty good job of surrounding him yeah. but not getting in his way. I think it was his own man. Have you ever seen a worse no. first half of special teams than Syracuse has put on today? It no, could I be. Think, I think they've said every a single here. phase of the special teams, they've been lousy. I mean, not good, bad, lousy. Yeah, he never really got bought into it. The man was pushed back very legally and just didn't give his own man space yeah. to catch it. Thomas Whitfield was pushed back and keeps the Mountaineers offense rolling. Minute 10, there's a full complement of timeouts. Colson only gets a couple of yards. And they'll take one here with a minute five to go before halftime. West Virginia, chance for a knockout punch after the third mistake by Syracuse special teams. 
A great education begins with dreams. A great university makes them possible. At West Virginia University, students are designing microchip sensors to build the country's smartest bridge, producing an Emmy award-winning documentary, developing laser techniques to study plasma propulsion, creating a new generation of cancer drugs. Start living your dreams at West Virginia University, where greatness is learned. UCS is athletes, but first and foremost, we're students. We go to class, study, do term papers, take exams, and then we watch game film, go to practice and lift weights. We graduate with distinguished degrees and get good jobs. We're doctors, teachers, and engineers. We work in high finance and community service. Sports is the means to an end. We are student athletes, the future civic leaders of America. Back here in Morgantown. Mountaineers only loss of the season was 1913 to the now 22nd ranked Virginia Tech Hokies. West Virginia had designed I mean the top 10 top 5 team all year. Virginia Tech who we'll see next Thursday night against Georgia Tech was unranked at the time. Yeah. Right in the snap. False start. 83 on the offense. Five yards. Second down. That would be the wide receiver, Miquel Henderson, who earlier uh, missed a block to draw the ire of Rich Rodriguez, his head coach. One of the reasons why that happened is, this, is they were looking over to the quarterback, was looking over to the coach to get that signal. That famous thing that I don't like. You, you, <laughs> later on, I hope the game will explain to me okay. why they do this. You know what? Right. The game has not been very watchable. Right. But in the third quarter, we're going to talk about the history of the evolution of offense. Please, that's good hey, stuff. That sounds like it should be on like National Geographic or Discovery. Yeah. But we're going to break it down. LC is going to take us back to the 30s, the 40s. <laughs> it's going to be good stuff. On the run, into the record books. A flag is down as Marshall goes into the end zone for a touchdown, but always a sign. When the guy who threw the flag doesn't signal touchdown, it usually comes back. We're going to find our man Chris Henry, number five, holding on the left-hand side of the screen. Right, right, in, right in front of right in front of the <laughs> official. Marshall would have broken Donovan McNabb's quarterback rushing record if it stood. Interesting, Chris Henry did not get the start Ooh, against was... UConn because of his inability to block and willingness to block. That, that was a better tackle than some of yeah, his let, his hand shoot. came through. That was almost like a wrestling move. Oh yeah. But he didn't start against UConn because he wouldn't block. And I think the uh, Well, that wasn't a block. That was in, a tackle. That was a tackle. He did go after tackle, block hold. <laughs> Thomas Whitfield is now playing corner as Lakai is out. When he was helped off, he didn't look like he was coming back on the field anytime soon. So Syracuse is without one of its best cornerbacks and now they'll pick on Whitfield 29 I would imagine we have second and 15 coming up here gets the four man rush fired by Marshall touchdown to Henry right at that cornerback Whitfield and a marker comes in after the play they go right back to him and for the second straight year, two touchdowns against Syracuse for Henry. Well, forget about that block and send that Henry down the field. Watch this, Kirk. Watch the concentration in the hand. I like the idea that he was not disrupted by the defensive back waving at the football. Wasn't that great? Oh, he's, he's, he's continuing to get oh. better. Great hands, a great yeah. athletic ability. Dead ball, late hit, number 20 on the defense. That's Anthony Smith, the free safety, who was coming over to get Henry yeah. and he took the worst of it. Hope he's not hurt. That's Henry it. is 6'5", about 195 pounds. And I remember last year when we saw him play, he was just starting to get a feel. He was so and raw he was as a receiver. He's really improved and become more of a complete receiver. Number 12. You that know, was a nice catch. If you're a Syracuse coach, you got to be sick to your stomach because you just gave him another touchdown because of the stupid play on special yep. teams. Yep. Sick. The missed punt catch. Cooper's on for the extra point. Yeah. And it's 17-0. That was a late, it was a late hit. It's funny. I wonder if, if that ball comes out if it's called a touchdown or not. 
if he's able to dislodge that, the ball from Henry on that big I think hit, that was fine. I think he held it long it would, I think it would have been yeah. longer. That, that's interesting. I don't know if people think of that in terms of the long hit. Well, I meant, or the late hit. I mentioned Chris Henry had two touchdowns against Syracuse last year. A couple of big plays. He had a very big receiving day against the Orange. The junior from around New Orleans area. There's the two long touchdowns. That one against Diamond Ferry in the Carrier Dome. And good to see that the trainers are no longer looking at him, and he's okay. Henry is a playmaker, that's for sure. Now nine touchdowns on the season, and he has 19 in his career, four of the 19 coming against the Orange. He's a great receiver, but I will say this, as far as his development and how far he's come from last year to this year, and he's a junior, and you've got to think he's thinking probably about the, the next level, possibility of making a jump. Athletically, he's special. Maturity wise, which is a big thing that the NFL looks like looks at that's an area that I think he's gonna have to continue to show his development Willingness to block so you don't get bench getting yeah. ready for a game little things like that are very important Well, we talked about Lakai being out and Thomas Whitfield the defensive back and Paul Pasqualoni Was unpleased with his uh, junior cornerback. I want to know what happened on that play I mentioned Whitfield in for Lakai, and that's just good coaching by West Virginia. They went right after that matchup, a size mismatch. Lakai is a six footer, Whitfield's 5'9. And Coach, 17 up. Coach said, What happened? He said, He's got about six or seven <laughs> inches on me, Coach. And I'm on the second team, Coach. That's right. <laughs> the first team guy in there might have been okay. Anthony Smith's penalty means the kickoff comes from midfield. And it's a touchback. Right, let's go check in with Jill Arrington. Yeah, that cornerback, DeAndre Lacalle, they needed him on the field, but he's in the locker room. They took him off the field. He has an injured shoulder. We don't know the exact injury. However, it's a shoulder. They're going to check him out at halftime. All right, Jill, thank you. Well, 53 seconds left here in the first half. Syracuse has only one timeout. They had to use two when they couldn't get plays in properly. So, undoubtedly, they'll uh, run it and take it into the locker room here at the half. Each team has run 33 plays. West Virginia 209 yards and Syracuse 109. Oh, they'll throw it here on first down, down 17 nothing, and the pass is knocked down. Then incomplete. You sure these are the same guys that they played against Florida State? Yeah. That we watched on tape yesterday? One thing we did talk about. You're right. Fact is the same, same, no, no, same I'll tell you what's the difference. The dome? Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's perfect. I coached in the dome. They look super men. Plus, get them in the house. I, there's, Syracuse always gets ready for that one big game. They yeah. all, and especially at home in the dome. Yeah. That dome is tough to play in. I'm telling you, Florida State had problems. Yeah. From the 20-yard line, a run of a yard. If you're just joining us, by the way, Walter Reyes, who normally is in a running back for Syracuse. West Virginia takes timeout, by the way, with 41 seconds to go. Why not? Try to block another punt. Yeah, third down, take another timeout, and then make him punt. Reyes uh, has uh, flu-like symptoms. He's been bothered by him for the last day and a half and uh, has not played. Has been with the towel and the jacket most of the night. College Football Saturday presented by Crestor on ESPN this weekend. Noon Eastern, Northwestern goes to Madison after Wisconsin's great victory over Purdue. And then at 7.45 Eastern, team we saw last Thursday night, Miami, will be in Raleigh. They're all fired up to have game day. Come down Tobacco Road, taking on NC State. That game also available, ESPN HD. I'm going to guess, knowing you guys for a while and living in Big Ten country, that Northwestern Wisconsin game is one of those be careful games. That's, in my opinion, it is, just because Wisconsin's come off two big wins on the road, and no matter what Barry Alvarez tells his team, they're going to show up flat. Early kick, playing Northwestern. It's hard to get up for Northwestern, and Northwestern has talent. That's yeah, a game do. you just need to be careful of. I don't think so. I think that Wisconsin's got the defense. But even if they're down, they can play just about anyway. Their defense is one of the best defenses in the country. Without Erasmus, though. Yeah, that's James, that's a great man. defensive You're end. Right. He's injured. He's not in I there. forgot about him. He play against Purdue. Third down. Quarterback draw with Patterson trying to get the first down. He's pulled down at the 26 by Jameel Adai, who is shaken up on the play. West Virginia is taking a timeout here, but their concern is the three-year starter who missed all of last year when he had a red shirt with a shoulder injury. And he is in a lot of pain over there. Well, 
medical red shirt last year for a die and throw him in to start at Miami back in the 2001 season. So he's a guy who's figured it out on the run under Rich Rodriguez. Well, as they look at a die, let's remind you, Wisconsin is on this mm -hmm. short list of seven teams that are undefeated. I talked about Fowler's ESPN.com column. Yeah. It goes through, I, I forget the number, Chris, had like 28 or 29 games for the big guys or the, the BCS conferences for those teams that they play. You know, what's going to happen in those games? Will everybody lose once? The remaining games for SC yeah. in Oklahoma and Miami. But when you kind of look through it, who everyone plays, you're starting to think in the back of your mind, could you have a scenario of three teams mm -hmm. getting to the finish line undefeated? A lot of football to be played, sure. but when you look at the schedule, you've got a lot of teams that will be heavily favored within their games. Yeah. How about a scenario, if, uh, who knows if it happens, yep. but how about a scenario with Oklahoma and Miami playing, or Oklahoma and the USC maybe playing for a national championship, and then Miami and Auburn maybe playing in a Sugar Bowl, maybe both of those teams I think undefeated. All, I think if, if Auburn runs a table and beats Georgia and everybody in the SEC, and then they either beat Georgia the next time or Tennessee, I think there's nobody in America that can't put them up there ahead of Oklahoma who has only beaten one good football team, which is Texas, and maybe a Texas A&M that's way down the list. Yeah. The uh, SEC champion... But, well, I must be in that sure, game. Sure. I'm sorry. You get That's to do this on Thursday. Thing. But what we saw yeah. with the computers, I think it surprised everyone when the first BCS came out, is that the computer juice is a little bit juicier than we all thought. We thought the polls were going to yeah. just rule the day. As you see, Adai uh, helped off, fortunately, under his own power, and he looks a little bit better than he did when he was down on the field. That computer power surprised me a little bit when we saw Miami move ahead of where Oklahoma is. But the other thing to keep, keep in mind, and you make a lot of lot of sense here, sorry, Auburn trying to run. Anybody who runs through the SEC undefeated and wins the SEC championship game deserves to be in. Yeah. I'm just saying, when do they make a jump over a USC or an Oklahoma if those other teams keep winning? You know, the Chris Fowlers of the world that are out there filling out their AP poll. When do they make that jump, yeah. Auburn over Oklahoma or over USC? I think if those other teams are winning. Probably trying to block this punt, Brandon Carney. No, they might not be going to return here. This is the best chance to block it. Don't send anybody who might be able to block it. I'll tell you. Andy Marker's down. Orange is a tough one. Here. Right. Orange is a tough watch. I'll tell you that. A snap. False start. Offense number 20. Uh, Five yards. Fourth down. Or Anthony Smith. The worst, flag there. worst first half of special team play that I might have seen in a long, long time. Well, for worst offense special teams combo, I think they covered oh. two of the three we've ever seen. Defense, they held yeah, up there. There's for no it. excuse for special teams because yeah. the opponents have nothing to do with it. You could have, you, you should just well coach their special you know, teams. Their special teams were pretty good against Florida State. That's the weird thing. They, yeah. they were pretty good special teams wise. Carney to kick Pac Man Jones, very good return man. Ball bouncing around, hit somebody. I don't know why Syracuse didn't get their hands on it there. There they go, down at the 29-yard line. And it deflected off of a Syracuse player a little bit farther up, Joe Newman. Well, this is a, a different era of Syracuse football. It is. Donovan McNabb, September 12, 98. Unbelievable game. One of the best performances by a visitor ever in the big house. So many big performances. A great running the ball, too. The all-time leading rusher for quarterbacks in the history of the Big East. Until tonight, even with that flag over there before, Rashid Marshall passed Donovan McNabb as the all-time leading quarterback rusher in the Big East. I'd like to see a split screen of Donovan Syracuse and Donovan Philadelphia. I think he's put on 45 oh. pounds of muscle. He's, he's a bigger line, bird. K.J. Yeah. Harris here on the run, guys, with 15 yeah. seconds left. Brought down at the 41-yard line. He's eating all that Campbell's soup that That's his right. brother gives him. That's right. Oh, a fumble. Is that a fumble? It is a fumble, and Syracuse has Look it. out. I thought the referee was coming in to call a timeout, but K.J. Harris, he thought the same thing. The ball did come out. Syracuse has it with 11.4 seconds left. I think the safety diamond ferry gets his left hand in there and rips it. Gets the ball out before his knee oh, that's touches. Perfect. That's the second week in a row he did that. Had a great yep. strip against Florida State. Yep. Speaking of that, there was a great article in USA Today. Did all you that. see that? Yep. About how college coaches have gone to the pro camps and learn how to strip. That's a ter that's a perfect example of what they're talking about right there. Now, that's the third forced fumble by Ferry this year. Mm. Pretty good in six and a half games. 11.4 seconds left. And tenths of a second on the clock here in the stadium. Syracuse has one timeout left. They need to get to the 30 for a realistic field goal opportunity. Patterson's throw tight. 
a hat is thrown by the referee. The pass is caught by Jones. He may have gone out of bounds and come back in. Let's see. Will the field judge throw his hat? Nope, it's all good. So it's a first down and a field goal opportunity. The field judge, Bruce Williams, threw his hat. Usually that means the guy was an ineligible receiver. So with 5.3 left, since they went out of bounds, they didn't need to burn the timeout. And Colin Barber has a 42-yard field goal attempt. Remember, they blocked it over the left guard last time they tried this. They overload that left side again, Lee. It's officially 41, and he missed it left. Hey. That sky cam look for field goals is great. And a fitting way to end a uh, special teams disaster in the first half. A missed field goal. Syracuse down 17, and their head coach is with Jill Arrington. Well, Coach, you've had a blocked punt, a blocked field goal, a dropped punt. How will you address your special teams problems at the half? Well, uh, we're going to address them, and uh, we've got to do better. We've got to make a better decision catching that punt, and uh, we've got to do a little bit better job kicking field goals, obviously. Coach, you haven't been able to get much going on offense. You don't have your playmaker, Walter Reyes, out there. Do you have any ideas of what you'll do in the second half? Well, here's the thing. We've, we've had some receivers open that we just haven't hit. I think that if we could have hit a couple of the open receivers, uh, we would have had an opportunity to get things going a little bit. We really just need to get in a little rhythm and get some things going, and we're going to work on that here at halftime. All right, Coach. Thank you. Mike, back to you. Okay, Jill, we wonder if Walter Reyes will play in the second half. We'll find out after halftime. West Virginia 17, Syracuse nothing. West Virginia gets the ball first for the second half. And here's Chris in the studio. All right, Mike, thank you. This All right, Chris, thank you. Second half, all set with the West Virginia to get it going. We'll show you how the Mountaineers have gotten within 30 minutes of a sixth win. Syracuse's special teams, not so special. Blocked field goals, missed field goals, blocked punts. Nothing good. Meantime, Rashid Marshall has set the Big East quarterback rushing record here tonight, passing Donovan McNabb and the two touchdowns caught tonight. Man who caught two touchdowns for West Virginia against Syracuse last year, and Chris Henry. So the Mountaineers on top by 17. This play gets started here in quarter three. The temperatures dip back into the low 50s on this damp, cool October night. And Feeling really cold in that sideline. Paul Pasqualoni uh, will detail it a little bit later on. Under a lot of heat. And uh, people have said for a while that Paul Pasqualoni was on the hot seat. Most of the people who said that had no clue what they were talking about because he wasn't. After last year, that story changed. And now Syracuse is going to face a second half where they must win. Otherwise, they will fall to three and four from five yards deep. The Pac-Man brings it out. And Adam Jones is thrown back to the 24-yard line. He's just desperate to make a play, especially on national TV. And there is Pac-Man, Adam Jones. Second half thoughts there, Mr. Herb Street. I, th I think that Mike might have been the worst first half of football that I've seen a team play this year, in particular the quarterback of Syracuse, Perry Patterson could not find his rhythm to have any chance here in the second half. They've got to get him back and throw the football on first down to try to have a chance to avoid the pass rush. He's got to get comfortable. And the only way he can get comfortable is to complete a, th a few throws or early downs when the pressure isn't as intense. Uh, first down run with Jason Colson gets to the 27-yard line. And that leads us to our Home Depot coaching adjustments, Lee. Well, Kirk, I agree with you 100%. We didn't go over this either, but I think they need to throw first and 10 play action because what it does, it gives them better protection. And then on defense, they got to play more zone, make West Virginia drive the football. Now, West Virginia's got to stick it to them. They cannot get conservative or they can get in a tough ball game. They don't have to if they stay proactive and go after them. Second down, Marshall's pass is knocked down. It's been a good game for the defensive line for Syracuse. Kadir Drame, who uh, broke his wrist a year ago, couldn't weight lift. Wrist heel, he could weight lift, got a little stronger, played well so far. Well, the entire defense has played well. They've been put in some tough situations. The athletic ability is probably at its best on the Syracuse defensive line. That time, Drame got his hand up there to bat it down and put West Virginia now in a third and long. I thought Trev made a good point at halftime that uh, Syracuse's defense was playing pretty well. The West Virginia offense trying to pick up a third down for the first town. 
first time I should say Colson bodies going as a flag comes in Tenard Jackson stops him a yard shy of the first down let's check the whistle legal use of hands on the Mountaineers while Syracuse decides to take fourth in a yard or third and long illegal block in the back number 29 on the offense 10 yards from the spot of the foul third down we'll take the third and long and here's Jill well, coach Rodriguez was happy with the way his defense played in the first half but not so much his offense he felt like they should have taken advantage of some more opportunities still not happy with those penalties he's trying to clean their play up in this half he says you can't do that against a good team like Syracuse thinking they will come out a different team in this half bad news though for Syracuse Walter Reyes still not feeling well won't be on the field as of now and DeAndre Lacalle that left shoulder is hurt and he is out for the game. OK Jill so Syracuse with that starting tailback and left cornerback here in the second half and Thomas Whitefield who uh, Whitfield I should say who was beaten earlier in the game is at the bottom of the screen. So they took the penalty it's third and 18 Marshall takes off has blocks and he's just shy of the first down. Well, that's a perfect example where people watch the game and say oh they got to punt the ball. But remember if it wasn't for that penalty. Ha ha. They would even be closer to it and already make the first down. And there's a point where the West Virginia penalty cost them possession of the football. Phil Brady is the punt return man. Rundell Bembo standing deep to receive. And Bembo out of Tallahassee takes it from the 25. Return of five. To the 30 yard line. The fans were uptight because the referee was standing over the ball. I'll tell you why in a second. Special teams first half was a disaster for Syracuse. Three field goals missed, one punt blocked, and then at the end of the half, the punt return that was fumbled by Marcus Clayton, who was not back to receive the last one. And there, that miss to end the half. Chris Rippon is the uh, special teams coordinator for Syracuse, he was the defensive coordinator. Uh, until a couple of years ago and when he was the special teams coordinator back in the late 90s their special teams were very good first down run was Damian Rhodes who gets about six I want to go back to that punt for a second you heard the West Virginia fans were uptight because Syracuse is bringing personnel on the official is standing over the ball as Jamil Adai is shaking up for the second time here in this game it is the rule that you have to give the other team a couple of seconds to sub. So when West Virginia brought its personnel on late, the umpire stands over the ball until Syracuse has a couple of seconds to reasonably substitute to try to avoid all the smoke and mirrors of the spread offenses. It's just a little game, and that's why the official was standing there. Fans were frustrated, but it is a new rule put in this year. The American Football Coaches Association put that rule in because they were putting in too many people too quick and catching the defense off bounds. So they said we need to balance it out. Speaking of the American Football Coaches Association, Paul Plascaloni is first vice president of the American Football Coaches Association Board of Trustees. That's one of the highest honors a coach can ever have is to be that way. He's well respected by the coaches in this country. Just say what your peers think of you. Oh, it's wonderful. A die comes off, second and four. And the option to Rhodes again. Two yards. Number one, Damian Rhodes. Well, Perry Patterson, when he's had to throw the football, has struggled. This is something that hurt him earlier this year, missing open receivers, and it's cost him tonight. He's had open people downfield, opportunities to make big plays, and he has misfired time and time again. And now he, once again, at least this time, it's third and short. It seemed like the first half, it was third and seven or longer every single time. Third and two throw is caught for the first down. It's Steve Gregory back in the game and a die. <laughs> He's back in the game and slaps it Gregory after the gain of 11. That time he shot it in there and picked up the first down and looked like the quarterback that we watched on tape when he played Florida State. Third down, gets back, makes the read, and puts it right into the shoulder of Gregory to pick up a first down. And when a guy's struggling, sometimes a throw like that could be the thing to get him going. That's the second good pass he's thrown to a stationary receiver. 
The receiver's not moving. He can throw it right <laughs> there to him. There's moving targets. It's a different animal. Yeah, it's Rhodes. Oh, yeah. You know what? Uh, here's Rhodes reversing his field. And gets back to midfield and actually picks up a yard. Is the West Virginia defense particularly quick tonight, or is Syracuse particularly slow on offense? I think it's a combination yeah. of, of the two. I think West Virginia is reading their scouting report and saying, okay, on first and ten, chances are they're going to run the football, whether it's a, a counter or a zone or an option. We're going to get everybody up there to stop the run. They're outnumbering them, and they have the speed to slow down these slow developing plays second and nine right in the middle of the field Patterson complete just a gain of five that time that is his uh, fullback Greg Hanoyan the fourth catch for Hanoyan one of them was a touchdown earlier this year and remember this West Virginia defense is playing very very well they've only allowed three offensive touchdowns in the last four games mm, yes so this is a nice defensive football team moving to the ball well coached by Jeff Castillo and I tell you what thing they get them in a situation where they want them in third down almost all the time there is the true freshman Rice Moss seeing his first action tonight he's bottom of the screen Patterson pressured Takes off, put his head down. He's going to come up a yard short. Not in field goal range. At the 42, we'll see what they'll do. Coach Castillo mixing it up. This man, this time a three-man look, but he brings the blitz from the middle and the blitz from the outside. And just a little change up like that, after showing so many four-man fronts on third down, is enough to confuse that Syracuse offensive line. Good spot they're going to measure. But I like the fact that Jay Henry, number 42, blitzed, missed Patterson, got up, and made the tackle from behind. That was a terrific play by Jay Henry, 6'1", 220, from Tulsa, Oklahoma, number 42. And he's the backup over there at that linebacker yep. spot. They're a full foot and chain short. Scott Jerko, you saw him running off. He's the starting linebacker. He was shaking up a couple of snaps ago. So West Virginia defense that is not super deep right now. And they're going to go for it, and I couldn't agree more. Have to, yeah. Have to. Have to go. Because when they punt, it's dangerous. All pass Colony, no matter what points. happens, I like this call. Gotta get points. Anything. Keep trying. Well, this great crowd will uh, certainly be a big help to the Mountaineers on fourth and less than a yard. We'll let you listen to them. First down. Out to the 34-yard line. Well, absolutely. We were talking about George DeLeon, 20 years at Syracuse, the offensive line coach. This was a tremendous call. Perry Peterson fakes it, comes around on a naked boot. He's got one receiver down the field, Kirk, just in case. But a nice call by George DeLeon right time. Call. Really good call to get him that first down. My word. Perry Patterson. Picked up the first. He just got it there. Usually a fake option pass right around here from the 35. Yeah. Up straight option with Damian Rhodes. I'll tell you, a die. Oh. He's getting beat up, banged up, pushed around, but he's in on every play. <laughs> the junior out of Florida. See, to me, Syracuse offense, Mike, you know this better than anybody. When Syracuse is Syracuse, the quarterback is a threat running the football on the option. He's not a threat. The defense, he's not even thought of. This is a, it's a glorified toss sweep. All their attention is locked in on the tailback. On, the quarterback can keep it if he wants to. The defense doesn't care about that. He's going to run a 5-3-40 and not pick up a yard. Certainly missing Walter Reyes, but you're right. If you do run option, your quarterback has to be more of a running threat. Patterson, the lefty, throws complete to his tight end, Kovaleski. He's down at the 27-yard line. You know, guys, people talk about teams as championship teams in West Virginia. He's going to have a chance. They'll be favored in the rest of their games to get to 10-1. Is their defense good enough to hold up here through the rest of the season? I've seen them in a lot of games give up a bunch of yards. I think their offense-defense combination and the fact that they play a lot of the toughest games right here is the difference. So they're good enough on defense to get and to 10-1. Yeah, and who's going to who's, who's move the ball on them in the last few games? There's nobody. Boston College and Pittsburgh in the last two games. Yeah. No. 
third and two. Full house backfield. Option into there the you go. Patterson looked like a different runner there yeah. as he takes it into the red Perry zone. Patterson. There you go, Perry. <laughs> so you run a little bit of option here for Syracuse. He's coming down and, and talking to him. This isn't his favorite thing, but nice job there with the ball, giving a little bit of a fake, getting the defender, Adenia, out of the way and then cutting it upfield for the first down. Third Syracuse trip into the red zone tonight, and here is Rhodes turning the corner. Inside the 10 and near another first down over at the seven yard line. Damian Rhodes came out of Fayetteville Manlius High School, not too far from Syracuse, played as a true freshman. And we saw him out at BYU when he made his uh, career mm -hmm. debut. Walter Reyes's emergence as a thousand yard rusher each the last two seasons took a little of the luster off Rhodes. And then he hurt his ankle last year and essentially was not himself at any point during the year. This year he's come back a little bit bigger, 25 more pounds, can handle more of the pounding, but he doesn't look as fast as he used to be. Carrying the load tonight with Rhodes out because of the flu, or Reyes out because of the flu. It's first and goal, and the fullback, Hanoyan, pounds forward to the two-yard line. This has been a nice drive because you know what they did? They've mixed up the play-action passes, as we talked about, on first and ten and run some boot. Kirk, George DeLeon is using Patterson now really well option yep. boot and running the ball nice drive and i think for the way they like to call a game you have to have something from the quarterback not only throwing but running as well and that's why this multi-dimensional attack can hurt you if you get something like that from the quarterback this is the 13th play of this drive this is a heck of a drive in motion the backup fullback Rion evans option right patterson to Rhodes to the end zone touchdown for the yard well the first time they got the ball they needed a good drive and that was a terrific one 17 6 now and just by having a few plays where Patterson was able to get involved all of a sudden he's feeling a little bit different about himself and the defense is responding a little bit differently to him and that's when different things open up such as Rhodes here on the option pitch and don't forget seven points just before the half for West Virginia on a dumb special teams play or the game would be 10 coming up seven Colin Barber will now 10-6 the special teams nightmare oh. rolls on Can't kick it for them. They've got to make them. 17-6 to score. Damian Rhodes, seven touchdowns as a freshman. It's his fifth of the year. He cannot pay it off with the extra point. 11 points deficit. It's a totally new full-size sedan. Introducing the Ford 500. Its command seating lifts you up, improves your view, and heightens your confidence while its first-class accommodations give you the freedom to spread out. It takes the sedan to a much higher level. The new Ford 500, elevating the sedan. Ford, built for the road ahead. You guys on the road a lot? Yeah. Send your wives pictures with Sprint PCS Vision Picture Phones. Show them you're working hard. Show them your pretty face. Show them that prize bull. Check it out. More people use Sprint PCS Vision Picture Phones than any other to easily share unlimited pictures. Now at Sprint stores, buy one starting at $29.99. Just point and shoot. We know how to do that. <laughs> Sprint PCS. Now that's better. Sharp Aquas Liquid Crystal Television. Greater detail reveals all. Is it true your zesty chicken border bowl isn't made until I order it? Yep. 
Sounds tasty. I'll have a zesty chicken border, but... A zesty chi... A zesty chicken... A zesty chicken... Well, take two. Sorry. Chi Taco Bell Zesty Chicken Border Bowl. Grilled all-white meat chicken, hot steaming rice, crisp lettuce, and fiesta salsa. Made right when you order it. For a freshly prepared meal, think outside the bun. Spice up the night. Open till midnight or later. That is Syracuse's running backs coach and a pretty darn good running back in his day as well, David Walker. Talking to Damian Rhodes. And Syracuse has given a lot of opportunities to the Mountaineers and special teams here tonight. Still the West Virginia lead is 11. And Pac-Man doesn't get his hands on it. Brandon Miles does. And nice return for Miles out to the 33-yard line. We'll see if Rashid Marshalls can get going in West Virginia passing offense that has only thrown for 52 yards here on the night. Wallace looks like a blowout. IGN calls it the most complete hoops game on the market. ESPN NBA 2K5. Rated everyone. As any military man worth his salt will tell you, the choice of artillery will vary from operation to operation. Consider a daylight maneuver with a strong civilian presence. Here you'll find the manual calls for a lighter ordnance. Mission accomplished. Sometimes the light way is the right way to live the high life. Combines the things you love about a car with the stuff you need from an SUV. The totally new Ford Freestyle. One vehicle, endless possibilities. Ford, built for the road ahead. Excuse me, do you believe your brokerage firm's advice is objective? Sure, their objective is to sell me something. Well, he only calls me when he's got something to sell. I made it my objective to do my own investing. So I switched to TD Waterhouse. Best move I ever made. TD Waterhouse brings together free, independent research and third-party reports so you can make your own objective decisions. You can do this. Switch today to TD Waterhouse, the alternative to higher-priced brokers. Rich Rodriguez was at Tulane for their undefeated season. A revolutionary offense with Tommy Bowden and Clemson at well, as well, I should say. And back in his alma mater, coaching the Mountaineers, who lead by 11. Let's check in with Jill Arrington. Jill? Uh, well, Jason Colson was something to prove tonight to Syracuse on why they should have picked him up as a running back, has outrushed them tonight, 81 yards to their 78. Oh, Jill, they'll try to get more rushing yards out of a receiver this time. And a big stop there on the first down run. As K.J. Harris handed it off, is that Pac-Man? Yeah, it was. Well, Pac-Man Jones, he's going to get his hands on the ball on offense. He did, they stopped him. Here is the Colson story that Jill was talking about. Kid from Rochester, New York, 70 miles away from Syracuse. Retained the starting job after Harris was injured and didn't play against Connecticut. And has shown to be a good complete running back between the tackles and bouncing it outside as well. Second and five, and here is K.J. Only a couple of yards. Ryan LaCasse, the tackle. We'll have third and two coming up. All of a sudden, a little life out of Syracuse. Not only the touchdown, the defense has been holding their own all night. You see a little life on the sidelines. Syracuse uh, team moving around a little bit differently. This is a big, big sequence of plays for the Syracuse defense to try to get the ball back to Perry Patterson in the orange offense. Let's see if Colson in there now. The play is still alive. No whistles were blown, and the pass is thrown complete for a first down. A bizarre-looking play. And I guess once the nose man came into the neutral zone, the center just snapped it. I mean, the offensive yeah. line well trained here. Yeah, did you see? They didn't, they didn't move. even move. Even after he threw it and he went out of bounds, I looked. The offensive line is still in place. I'm just wondering if the center snapped it after he got the guy in the neutral zone. That's what he's supposed to do. Right. Get him in the neutral zone. Snap the ball. 
great, but usually the offensive right line, they flinch or something. I'm talking, the play went all the way across the field. You know, <laughs> no, you know Dave, what? roll the tape down there, guys. Come on. No, you know what happened? <laughs> I don't think they knew the center snapped the ball. No, they, they, look at him. He's like, I'm, look coach at, said don't move. move. I'm not I'm moving. Because they didn't know the center snapped the ball. Rick uh, Trickett would be very happy ball. with the way his offensive line just sat there. Well coached. Well, Rick Trickett, the very enough. See that smile again, guys. It's the little huh? things that get the <laughs> offensive linemen happy. The Tim, little things. Tim Brown, the sixth-year player, four-year starter, tore his Achilles <laughs> last year, right before the season started, moved in from right tackle. So first and ten, they'll take the play, which got him out to the 48-yard line. And a design run with Marshall. That time, the middle backer, Jerry Mackey, read it. And Marshall still picked up about five yards. Mentioned Jerry Mackey, who's from Freeport, New York. Sophomore with a great pedigree. He's, uh, he is the great nephew of the legendary John Mackey. Uh, tight end uh, back at Syracuse in the glory days, 1960 through 62. Uh, Bill Curry, our colleague, has often said that John Mackey, when he played with him with the Baltimore Colts, a career that sent Mackey to the Hall of Fame, one of the best players he ever played with. And Coach Curry played with some of the best, didn't he? Yes, he did. Uh, run by Jason Colson, just a couple of yards shy of the first down. It was a story that ESPN did, it aired in Sports Center. Must have been back a year ago, right around Hall of Fame induction time. Sad it to John Mackey, which Jerry's the great nephew of, uh, suffering from dementia. Doesn't understand much, doesn't remember much right now. Jerry told me this week that uh, John Mackey helped him in the recruiting process a little bit. Never really got him to Syracuse, but the worst onset of the effects of dementia started to set in right about when he became a senior in high school. Third and two. Marshall will run it and pick up the first down. Good. He is such a weapon in that backfield. Anthony Smith pulls him down. But Marshall keeps the chains moving. Well, Marshall's done this his whole career. I think he's gotten not only faster, but stronger. It's a he's, he's a tailback lined up underneath the center. And look at him breaking tackles and getting through there and fighting for extra yards. Touched on Mackey there, Mike. The thing that I love to hear about him is they say he's a coach's dream. Stays in with studies film late on his own. He's always over there at the facility trying to get better off the field and studying the game. From the 35, Marshall gives it to Colson. Nice cut back to get it out. Just shy of another first down at the 25-yard line. And right now it is West Virginia's offensive line getting the job done. Well, the center, Tim Brown, made a really good block. Garland Justice, number 69, the right tackle, reached out there and allowed it. The offensive line is coming back now by putting their face on somebody. Watch them as they reach out, put the face on them. But keep your eye right there on the center, 60. The reason why that play worked is 60. Tim Brown got in the face of the Syracuse man, and then whoosh, Colson option run to daylight. Nice looking play. Diamond Ferry, the Syracuse starting safety, was shaken up. So he has to come off. So now Syracuse is without two of its defensive back starters. As the Mountaineers are getting into Chris Henry range. Big number five for West Virginia has caught four touchdowns against Paul Pasqualoni's team in the last couple of games. And he's going to come in here for this second in the yard. Here's Tim Brown leading the charge the offensive line. Sixth-year player. Great to have a sixth-year player as your center and a senior as your quarterback. Second and one, straight eye give, first down, and more for Colson to the 13-yard line. What was interesting there is Syracuse's defense did a good job of disguising their coverage and getting Marshall to check to the run, but still with nine guys up there, Colson was able to go right around Anthony Smith, one of the better tacklers on the Syracuse defense, with a quick move to the outside. And I love the way the left tackle, Michael Watson, that time came out and disengaged, and boom, he popped that defensive end and gave him some running room. It is the third 100-yard rushing performance of the season for Colson. And K.J. Harris in the red zone with his chance. Takes it Number down one, to the 10. Kellen Pruitt made the tackle. 
not made for sure. It's white down there, there on the bottom. No combo for that one as we get down inside of two and a half here in quarter number three. What makes what, what makes West Virginia so tough down here is they got those good running backs in there like Harris and Colson, and then all of a sudden they got that really great running back number two, Rasheed Marshall, to come out on the boot plate. Yeah, the boot. That's what makes them so good, boy. Option of running Option throw. Option bootleg something. Second and eight. Here is Harris. Spun around but stays on his feet. Now he's going to pick up a block. Whitfield pushed him out of bounds, but may have had a hand up in his face mask. Either a hold or a face mask. We'll check the flag on the side as Harris kept that play alive. The five yard face mask will come there. Get West Virginia a little bit closer. Five yard face mask on the defense, number 29. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat second down. We've talked a lot about competition. K.J. Harris, when he gets his chance, he knows he better come in there and keep those feet moving and do everything he can to keep a play alive. Syracuse lucky that Whitfield came over there. I know he had the penalty there, but lucky he was there. That's a touchdown with great effort from K.J. Harris. Something the coaches are asking for and something that the 25-year-old Harris, because of his career in baseball, says that he has. So second and two from the four. And Colson is just kept shy of the first down. 24. See, a bootleg right, right here is carry. almost unfair. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. And it's, it's almost, with his speed and acceleration, you slide a tight end from the backside, dragging, and a, maybe your fullback out into the flat. Almost impossible to stop Rashid Marshall when he gets his shoulders turned and he gets to the outside when he breaks contain. Third and one. This is a little boot. Sure, hey, heard you, Herbie. Good job. Ryan Lacasse and Anthony Smith were ready for it. Like sometimes when you have like mindset, Syracuse would do that in the past and they're more ready for that play, that call down there. Field goal time, West Virginia. Well, Steve Dunlap, the defensive coordinator, that's a good job of scouting. Yes, because what they did is they probably have run that play two or three times in the year. Steve Dunlap, who spent 26 years at West Virginia as a player and a coach, is now the defensive coordinator of Syracuse and did a nice call that time Kirk you're right they ex definitely expected that like we did but yep. they're down there playing and making the plays yes. a cost showed a lot of speed there for a defensive end to run down Marshall Cooper from 26 a make from 29 a miss from 23 and another make from 26 14 point lead for West Virginia a Mountaineer team that's had three different players on its roster have hundred plus yard games there are a lot of teams that have multiple players having big seasons, but their seasons are Heisman type seasons. We'll talk about that next. And college football prime time brought to you by Miller Highlight. To live simply, proudly, boldly, manly. This is the Highlight. And the new Ford 500, built for the road ahead. Mike Lee, Kirk and Jill back with you here in Morgantown. WVU leading 20 to 6. Short kickoff. It's fielded and taken out to the 30 yard line. Field goal or kickoff was taken by Jeremy Sellers, the backup running back. Well, the conversation about the Heisman Trophy kind of narrows down as the championship chase narrows down. And Kirk, you made the interesting point that you got a lot of team or a couple of teams at least with significant contenders and multiple significant contenders on the same teams. Yeah, Oklahoma with Jason White and Adrian Peterson, USC with Reggie Bush and Matt Leiner. You have Aaron Rodgers. What I think is really interesting is with six or seven weeks still to go, the regions are still open. The Midwest with Orton losing last week is open. The East, the Southeast, there's some wide open regions 
which are, it's really going to affect this race. Right now, and Lee, I'll let you say what you want to say, but I, I think right now the best player in the country is Reggie Bush, Reggie Bush of USC. I think Matt Leinart is the leading contender for the simple reason he's the number one quarterback on the number one team in the nation. He's had back-to-back -back big wins in the second half against Virginia Tech and Stanford when he has to, against Arizona State when they really needed him, four touchdown passes, and he ran for one. He accounted for five touchdown passes in the biggest game of the year they've had so far. That's why I think he's got it. Patterson after a good completion mm. to Gregory on first down, a nine-yarder there to his huge tight end, Alex Shore, six foot eight, 277, Shore. out of Panama City, Florida. Uh, right near first down, and in fact, they pick it up. And for all that Syracuse has done to get in its own way tonight, if they score on this drive, we'll have a one-score game in the fourth quarter. Interesting. Remember, we talked about they need to throw play action on first down. Two in a row, two first downs in a row. They had run every first down, five of them, in the beginning of the second half. That was good strategy that time. Rhodes, a first down run. Sprinting toward the edge. Gets out to the 47-yard line. Just a pickup of about a yard. Anthony Mims made the tackle. This has been a much better quarter for Perry Patterson. Yeah, Perry Patterson looks like the guy that we expected to see tonight. Now in the second half, and a lot of it has to do with him getting into a comfort zone and also the play calling. He's been able to distribute the football, make some better throws, get involved in the option. Remember, he's recovering from an ACL from about a year and a half ago, and now he all of a sudden this offense has opened up, and his... His accuracy has improved dramatically here in the second half, and I think it's finally he's finally able to settle in there and get comfortable. This is another big drive for him. They've only had the balls twice yes. here in the second half. Yeah, remember, he's only a sophomore. Sure. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about some senior guy there. Yep. He's young. Patterson hit all five of his third quarter passes. They're at midfield as we go to quarter number four. Mountaineers by 14. Tonight's game available on ESPN HD. Thanks to Best Buy. And Phillips. And it's a big weekend for ESPN HD. You'll see the two NFL studio shows with Boomer Tommy. Congratulations to Steve Young on his uh, Hall of Fame nomination. Coach Ditka in there as well. NFL Countdown and NFL Primetime. And our Saturday college football game, Miami at NC State, 7.45 Eastern Time. Exclusively sponsored by Phillips and Best Buy ESPN HD. Don't want to forget Michael Irvin as well on the Hall of Fame nominee list. Off we go to the fourth quarter in Morgantown. Syracuse needs to score on this drive. Pass to the fullback, Breon Evans to the 30. Redshirt freshman at a Central High School in Bristol, Connecticut. 17 yards on the pickup. Sophomore to a freshman and a nice catch there by Evans showcasing his athletic ability. And that's one thing you've always seen at Syracuse is a fullback who's willing to be tough on those isol isolation blocks, but also the ability to slip into the flat and make a big catch there. It's the first time they've been able to showcase his talents tonight. That was a nice throwing catch. Another play action pass yep. gives him better protection. Moderate antsiness from the defense. This is an option with the receiver, Gregory. That was covered well by West Virginia. And the play was made by Scott Jerko, who went to high school. Just about a three iron from here. He's from Morgantown, West Virginia. And Scott is our hometown hero. He is a former walk-on who has turned into one of the top tacklers on this team over the last couple of seasons. And that walk-on program is so important here, Lee. Well, one of the best walk-on programs in America. The reason why they like it so much, Rich Rodriguez, the coach, was a former walk-on at West Virginia. Virginia. Good start to the quarter here. Second and 11 from the 31 yard line. Patterson hit as he threw. Got it in there. Gain of six to Gregory of the 25. That's the Pac Man, Adam Jones, who came in there and <laughs> tells Perry Patterson, I hit you. And Patterson could say, I'm seven of seven in this half. Uh, Patterson said, Was that what that was? I didn't even feel that. <laughs> it's like Dante Culpepper back there with his size. Pac Man came from the blind side coming up. But he's able to slide it in there and make another good throw to Gregory. Third down, they need to get to the 20 for a first down. Could be, could be four down territory the way they've kicked the ball tonight. Patterson blitz, screens, beat blitzes sometimes. Rhodes got a great block and picked up the first down. That's Steve Gregory who threw that block? It sure was. Missed four games with a thigh injury. Was a cornerback last year. Moved over to offense. He laid out a DB, Mike Lorello, to keep a drive alive. 
that's one of those he's been on the other end of that that's one of those that you're lining up and waiting for you see it as a receiver and boom just make sure your head's on the right side which he did a great job there by Gregory wow. hustling that's great hustle by Gregory and turned out to be the key block in picking up the first down by Damian Rose good job Steve Gregory first down from the 17 Damian Rhodes, nowhere to go. And brought down from behind. Good pursuit by Ben Lynch. Ben Lynch and Adam Lenort. Right in the middle of the heart of this 3-3-5 defense. are both from Oil City, Pennsylvania. A town of about 5,000, 10,000. Not a heck of a lot of people. They are real big heroes on the other side of the border up in Pennsylvania. West Virginia's defense has played extremely well. Listen to this stat. This is Syracuse's ninth possession of the game. It's the seventh time they've been inside the scoring areas of West Virginia. Only six points. More times on their side of the field than points. Patterson in trouble. Strength to get it away. And just threw it away. He was being held on to by Boo McClee. His given first name is Kevin. It's a flag down. Is the best athlete on the defense. Made a play. Syracuse was illegally downfield with one of the linemen. And West Virginia deciding if they'll make it third down and 13. It's interesting to see West Virginia trying to attack now, trying to mess up the rhythm of the quarterback, Perry Patterson, because of those play-action passes. They're bringing a lot more pressure. On the, offense, on the offense, number 71. Number 71. Penalty, Penalty is declined. declined. Third down. Third Before down. third down, here's Jill. Well, you were talking about Ben and Adam growing up together in Oil City, Pennsylvania. Well, at lunch, Ben told me that he talked Adam into playing football to begin with, that Adam used to be a cross country runner that he was skinnier than Rashid back then but Adam said that he only runs down because he has to and they make him run a lot in preparation for that defense of course Rashid Marshall the quarterback has that thin frame so third and a dozen bunch formation to the left pass caught by Jared Jones well shy of the first down from the 13 with 12 minutes left do you go for it you need to get to the seven for a first down considering I, uh, go ahead Lee. I go for the points I think you got to get points because of the fact there's still 12 minutes to go in a ball game I get points he's going Con the concern I have for Syracuse is this is their second possession and we're in the fourth quarter I think if a field goal is you're still going to be down 11 points yeah. I think you have to go for a touchdown okay there. I disagree and I'll tell you why because I think if they don't make it here now they're done I think if they kick a field goal and made it they, they might be done, be done. <laughs> you can see it on his face he wasn't sure they're right in between yeah. fourth and six okay first guess pressure or no they showed him back it up get it coming picked it up pass too high incomplete all right goodbye incomplete intended for Jared Jones and that is the frustration look that uh, oh, has Paul, been common. And not second guess, but you got to get some points. Remember the National Football League theory? I know it's not really good, but get some points when you're down here in the fourth quarter, at least Lee, psychologically. I understand. They can't still kick a soccer ball right now. Still, and not you know only that, still two I'll possessions. Bet you the next time he makes one, he'll uh, make the next one. Could kick a soccer ball. So, what, what do you mean? A West Virginia ball? takes over when we come back. <laughs> 26 West Virginia on top. The term spread offense is what defines this West Virginia offense. And offense is all around college football. It is the brainchild of that man, Rich Rodriguez. A lot of orchestrating from the line. A quarterback who can handle it well. And uh, more of a running game. There's Jason Colson with the carry there. Rich Rodriguez really came to this offense at Glenville State here in the state of West Virginia. And as I alluded to earlier, when he went to uh, Clemson with Tommy Bowden before that Tulane, the undefeated season, had some great quarterbacks there. Woody Dantzler at Clemson. Sean King at Tulane. And it's an offense that's evolved, and more people are running it and come to visit here and find out what it takes to run it. One thing is a number two under center, but it is truly a revolutionary phase in the game. Haven't thrown for much tonight. Try it downfield with Henry, who comes back to the ball, makes a terrific catch. For the second time on Thomas Whitfield using that size advantage here tonight. 47 yards. And Whitfield again, 5'9", trying to cover Henry, who's 6'5", all by himself. Marshall told us, if we get one-on-one -on -one opportunities, we have to try to take it. And that is an outstanding 
job by Chris Henry of adjusting, locating the football, and coming back. And once he found the ball and was able to come back, it was pretty much a no-brainer. He was able to come up and make the catch. 6-5 against 5-9. 47 on the play, 95 on the night. And flags will slide it back five yards. Right of the snap. Ball start. Offense number 69. Five-yard penalty. First down. Well, the spread offense would be the next step in the evolutionary process of offense and we've got the guy who can take us through the history of the evolution of offense because I played or coached in all of those <laughs> now Newt Rockney single wing <laughs> you were formation. There. what single they did wing. is remember they put the quarterback under the center that made the T then the wing T came in with Dan Devine and Arizona State not going to that in a second uh, first and 15 run first run for Purnell Williams the freshman who comes back Seven yard, 37 yard line is where he stopped there. Chris Thorner is shaken up on the play. So all these offenses over the years kind of took one thing from each other and evolved as time went on. And then when he went to the I formation, Tom Nugent, my former coach, invented the I formation at, at uh, VMI in 1947. But John McKay made it famous by winning Kirk the United. He won a national championship at USC with the I. I'll go into it further. Remember that old student body right, student oh. body left. Second and 12 pass is complete out of the spread to Eddie Jackson. And you just saw everything the spread does. They ran there out of the spread. Yeah. Now throw the deep ball, throw the pass to the senior Jackson as. West Virginia looks for the knockout score here, leading 20 to 6 in Morgantown. And we remind you that Sports Center will come up after the game. Mountaineers have done a uh, good job offensively here on this drive after Syracuse has had the better of offensive play in the third quarter. So Williams out of New Lebanon, Ohio, the back who had 89 yards against Connecticut. Eight days ago, he's the carry man now, gets three there. Let's go back to the history of offense. Then you go back into the wishbone. Emily Bernard started the wishbone, yeah. the University of Texas, Oklahoma, and then the Bear. Then they, the defenses stopped the wishbone, and then, Kirk, they went into the more spread out offenses, which you're more familiar with. Yeah, the West Coast offense, you know, going yeah. back to the early 80s with Bill Walsh, everybody. I mean, it just it spread throughout the whole country. You saw the, the West Coast offense, and you saw variations the run and shoot offense now that you see the spread offense the reason we see the spread offense so much and the, you always talk about a neutralizer oh, big play touchdown Charles Hales the backup quarterback who has thrown a touchdown this year now gets a touchdown reception and 23 yarder that puts West Virginia on top by 20. And I just want to bring up one point. They went for the they went for the, the first down and not the points. And as soon as they didn't get their points, boop, you stick a pin in them. I'm telling you, I've seen it happen a hundred times. Duke adds the extra point. It's 27 to 6. But there's the versatility of this offense. Here's a guy, Hales, who's a backup quarterback. Might not be a receiver in another more standardized offense. Has specialties in the spread using his running ability as a quarterback, as a receiver for the score. I hate. It's West Virginia offense that averages 35 a game, top 15 in the nation, and the leading offensive unit in the Big East. Gets to 27 here on College Football Primetime, presented by Cooper Tires. A 21 point lead. Another pooch kick. That is again taken by the backup tailback for tonight, Jeremy Sellers. And the young man from Maryland is pulled down at the 23. Let's go back to the school. Well, Charles Hales, the backup quarterback, is lining up right here in the slot. Just going to slide him out in a swing pass. And what happens is number eight, Kelvin Smith, cannot get out there and make the play. And I think a little bit of the play action froze him just long enough, and it didn't allow him to have the speed to catch up with Hales. But poor tackling after he outran Smith by the rest of the Syracuse defense. And a pretty good night for Marshall. He has only completed on the night, guys, seven passes, three of them. Four touchdowns. In an all-throw no mode now, Patterson deep for Gregory. 
incomplete. Well played on the back end by Anthony Mims, who has long arms and his confidence is building as a quarterback. Before we leave Rasheed Marshall, his arm on that drive, three for three in that 83-yard drive. Mike, he hasn't thrown much, but in that drive he was three for three. We have eight and a half left in the game. This is only the third possession for Syracuse in this half. And they've kept the ball a lot here in this half, so they've improved offensively by throwing it more on first down. We're seeing an offense in Syracuse tonight that has a lot of different facets, really based off the option with a lot of fullback and three wide, some NFL type principles in it, with the option in the downfield NFL passing game, which is why. It's difficult to find a quarterback who can be the trigger man, but we were talking about the spread offense before. And the evolution of it. And the reason you see so many spread offenses is because the defense, so many defenses in college football have borrowed the zone blitz package from the NFL. And one of the ways to try to make the defense tip their hand is by spreading them all over the field and making them show where their blitz is coming from. So that's why you see so many people, not only the theories of the offense working, but trying to get the defense to tip their hand and what kind of defense they're actually going to run with their blitzes. First and ten, Patterson. It is he threw, complete to his tight end, third catch for Kovaleski. And the young man from Solvay, New York, which is right outside the state fairgrounds up in Syracuse, takes it out to the 43 yard line. He continues to get better. He's always been a big guy and a guy who's been able to block in this offense, but I think he has shown the ability to catch the football. Surprise you with his athletic ability for his size. What would this be? The eighth time Syracuse has taken it into West Virginia territory. And it's caught again by Hanoyan this time, the fullback to the 40. And six points. Yes. Six points. There you go. Thank you, folks. I thought Lee made an interesting point this morning about this, these offenses and West Coast offense and I formation and spread offense. He said, you, know, you go ahead. The really good teams the you good talk team. about. The good teams don't use the spread offense. It's an equalizer for a, a, a middle to a bottom team in a league. The only team that uses the spread type offense in a top 10 is Oklahoma. Right. Ooh. Ooh. Of all the offenses, a die almost had the interception. Which do you think? Which offense do you and you guys enjoy and think is the most dangerous against uh, for a defense to defend? Oh, wait, which ones do you enjoy, or is the most no, which difficult ones to do defend? You think the most difficult, the, the toughest, the best offenses, week in and week out. If you are one of these upper echelon teams. I know the one I, I like. I like, I like Southern California. I, that's, yeah, I like the West Coast. West Coast drop in Southern California because they utilize guys like Reggie Bush coming out of the backfield. You never throw, know where it's but, but they also, they also run. Run, 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 when they run, 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 run first. Yep. It's not right. just throwing it around. Right. Third and seven, five come. Patterson throws complete to Gregory. First down, lost the ball, but he was the last in possession at the 30-yard line. It, I don't know what term you'd use for it. What Virginia's trying to do with Al Groh have a little bit of West Coast offense, but the ability to be a Northeast-minded team and stand up there and get your fullback and run. And what Michigan does, too, with a downfield passing game, but still old Big Ten principles, if worst comes to worst, we'll give it to right. the running back 40 times and smack right. you in the mouth. Right. The combination of the two. Right. I think the biggest misconception about the West Coast offense is it's all about throwing the football and getting it downfield. It's as much about running and establishing the run as it is about the throw. Flag comes in as Patterson's pass is incomplete. Intended for Landell Bembo out of Tallahassee. And it looks like we'll have a holding foul called here. Again, Walter Reyes, Syracuse's best running back, didn't play all night. Flu like symptoms. Matt Tarullo, I think, was in the middle. Good football player. Starts 30 straight, but I think you're going to see him grab a hole right there. <laughs> nice tackle. Now, you know what? I know this is crazy, but that's what they're taught to do. If an off de a defensive lineman ever comes clean and you're an offensive lineman, grab him. Better than that, that than getting your quarterback. Yeah, get it. That young man started 30 straight games, 24 at guard, and six this year at center. He's going to be a good football player in the pros. And Lee is uh, one of 11 honorees of the American Football Coaches Association. Yep. You mentioned before their good works team for his uh, volunteer work. Speaks to third and fourth graders, volunteers, boys and girls club involved in the executive leadership program. 
He's going to play on Sunday for sure, Mac. He's a very good football player. Big for a center at 6'6", six, six, three and a quarter. Screen set up for Rhodes. But the Pac-Man. Adam Jones comes over to get him over at the 30-yard line. Let me tell you about Pac-Man. Yeah, go ahead. What we you? set him up yesterday, as we've told you a few times here tonight. <laughs> and Pac-Man, as you watch him break off the block here, come down. I'll use yours, Lee. Boom! Right there, knock him down. Listen, Pac-Man says, he sets me up, but who do you think the five best quarterbacks are in the country? We're getting in this big national college football conversation. We trade some names. They said, what do you think the five best receivers are? And then we start talking about big play guys, big catch guys, young ones. I'll finish the story after this second down. Jared Jones will be right on the first down line at the 20 with five and a half to go. So then Pac-Man asks me, said, now, after me, who do you think are the five best corners? <laughs> and it's the beauty of a corner. He was setting me up the whole time just to make sure that I got the sense that he is, in his mind, the best corner. <laughs> is there a guy in Miami anywhere yeah. in this guy's yeah. league? Yeah. What's his name? Antro uh, Rolls. Well, that, I mentioned Antro oh, Rolls. Oh, thank you. There. There are, I, I there did are, mention that right away. There are a few corners out there. And uh, Pac-Man Jones is good because he has versatility, because he can come up and he can tackle and he can cover. But he's a junior. Hello. And, I, 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 and he's under six feet. Yeah. You know, 5'11. It's right at the uh, right at the line there. Patterson, 15 of 19 in this half. Now 15 of 20 as that hot shot was incomplete. Jones was hoping for the deflection interception. He has three picks already this year. Had a would-be touchdown called back against Connecticut on a reverse. Well, Syracuse could build a little bit as on his second half because Perry Patterson has been much better with sure his has. feet and throwing the ball straight in the second half. So they can build on this. They're not going to play many teams as good as West Virginia, well, particularly in this environment. The big thing is, can they keep their, their confidence and can they keep fighting, realizing that they're, uh, they're three and four after this game? Pass is high and incomplete. Nobody's played a harder schedule. Right. Uh, I don't, I, you can yeah. tell me, did he, did he, did he? Nobody's played four of the teams currently in the top 50. Don't tell me the teams that were ranked when you played them, because those preseason rankings, you know, they're, they're as valuable as yesterday's newspaper that was used for fish wrap. But they played four teams that are currently in the top 15. The problem is their march of Ferrero will be gone. They'll have to beat Connecticut and uh, Pittsburgh at home and win at Temple and at Boston College to be a seven-win team this year to go seven and four. They could do that. But now that now there's no no margin for her. <laughs> and I think it may be the difference in what happens in the future. Blitz sack. Pac-Man. No fumble. Adam Jones. The leading tackler, the leading interceptor, the leading playmaker on this West Virginia defense. Gets another one. This time Pac-Man Jones comes from the boundary on a blitz. They've been doing this a lot. There's the sign adjust that Syracuse was expecting, but Patterson didn't see it. By the time he had a chance to react, number nine was right, boom, right there to make the play. Seventh tackle of the night for Jones. When he was a little kid, he'd go after that bottle to be fed. Kind of like Pac-Man used to eat up the little dots in the yeah. video game of the early in. Did you ever play Pac-Man, Lee? Are you kidding me? We had Tinker Toys right? <laughs> You ever heard of Tinker Toys? I have. Fourth okay. and 20. Patterson will roll. He'll try to throw back to the receiver on the near side. Fontenet pulled it in, but never had the balance. Or was inbounds. It's incomplete. The Mountaineers will get it back. And their defense may come through the night, allowing just one touchdown. Four touchdowns on the year if they're able to get through this. Remember, they've only allowed three offensive touchdowns in the last four games. That's now four in the last five games. Yep. That's pretty good defense, and I don't care where it is. Big East, Mid East, West East, and East. 407, a suggestion for the BCS when we come back. Ooh, it's good stuff. Who will stay undefeated in college football? Why Dan Marino, Steve Young, and Michael Irvin might soon be sharing a home and what got Carmelo Anthony in trouble at the airport? Sports Center after the game on ESPN. Richard Jefferson's birthday. John. June 21st. Correct. Elton Brand's favorite restaurant. Crystal Bay, Peekskill, New York. That'll be Crystal Bay, Peekskill, New York. That's right, Tim. Hey, Elton, you gotta buzz in. NBA shoot around. The pregame show with all the answers November 3rd on ESPN.
Rolling Stone raves, Team America is outrageously hilarious. Four stars. This is the funniest movie of the year. If you haven't seen it, you won't know what everyone is talking about. Team America, World Police. It are now playing. Good in the neighborhood. His name's Cole. He was 13 days late. And there was literally a point where I thought I was, you know, going to be pregnant forever. Where you spend your whole life putting yourself first, and then just like that, you're second. And you're just so thankful. That's why I bought a Saturn. The five star crash safety rated 2005 Saturn View. Now with five years, 60,000 mile extended vehicle coverage or a $1,250 allowance. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Cooper Tires Ultimate Bowl Tour. Go to a Cooper dealer near you or visit ultimatebowltour.com to enter. And in part by Saturn. People first. Back here in Morgantown. Nicely decorated. WVU helmet pumpkin there. They are, those are the, the Mountaineer Maniacs. It's the student group that has the upper deck across midfield. They all wear t shirts. A very good following for their team here in Morgantown. First down carry for Pernell Williams, the freshman out of Ohio. We're talking about the BCS, and West Virginia is at number 20. Not in the top 12. And just to refresh your memory with the BCS regulations, a team in the top six automatically gets in. And now for the Big East, they'll be watching over the next four years if the uh, conference champion is in the top 12 or not. That could, could affect if the Big East would retain its automatic bid. Second and eight. And... Holtzen bounces it to the outside. The flag comes down. So what's going to happen with this whole BCS thing that perhaps is a little more interesting and you may not know, in the next month or so, the six conferences involved are going to come out with a new set of regulations for the new world of the BCS. Remember, they voted to add the fifth game, and many people are still wondering why they did that, to add a fifth game to the Bowl Championship Series. What's going to happen to the Big East if they don't have a champion up in the top 12 on a regular basis? West Virginia or Louisville? First, you have to see how it plays out. It's a little early to say it's definitely going to happen. Who knows if Syracuse, Pittsburgh turns it around. If they don't, I would like to see people say take away the automatic bid. I'd love to see a conversation of maybe let the Big East champion, since they've been in the longest, and you cannot annex the entire Northeast from the championship picture. Give them an automatic shot in a championship game against the best BCS standings team from the Mountain West, from Conference USA, from the MAC, yeah. from the WAC, whomever it is, and make that another game on that championship Saturday when we have the ACC championship, the Big 12, the SEC, and the run here by Marshall, the all-time leading Big East quarterback rusher, takes it out to the 45. If the Big East team doesn't hold its weight here over the next couple of years, I think it would be a good way to keep them in and at the same time, make it fair to the other guys as well. There's going to be an automatic access spot. You create money with another game out there in the marketplace. I think it's fair because the Big East was there from the beginning. I think it's fair to give them that consideration. I think it's unfair to continue to give the Big East an automatic bid into the BCS the way we have these first few years in the BCS because it's, it, again, comparing the, the new conference in the Big East to the rest of the BCS conferences. But I like the fact that you're also opening it up to the, to the WAC to the Mountain West and to Conference USA because teams in those conferences deserve that opportunity in a play-in type of situation like you're talking about. Cohen Pruitt had the big hit there. But remember, they do have an opportunity it's right the now the way the rules are the because top. Utah's going to make it. Utah's not going to lose another game unless right. upsets BYU. BYU. Okay. BYU. No. At Wyoming. At Wyoming. Sneak, sneak around a chicken coop. Put it on your calendar, Mark. Put it on your calendar. calendar. Wyoming's going to give Utah all they can handle. <laughs> it's going to be 45 below zero in a snowstorm, and they won't they won't find Laramie. And they'll go right past Laramie, Laramie. And then all of a sudden, the game will be, I'm telling you, mark it down. Wyoming's got a shot at Utah. I'm That's the only that one down. Write it down. Okay. You don't think BYU has a shot? 
Pernell Williams across the 30 into the 26. One thing West Virginia's going to do, West, West Virginia's going to control its own destiny after this game here tonight to get through to the BCS from the Big East, and the Mountaineers will play at Rutgers, Temple, and Boston College coming here, and they'll be at Pittsburgh on Thanksgiving night. We'll be there. And we will be at the backyard brawl at Heinz Field. And that's the one I told you at the beginning of the year right. that I thought could yeah. be the difference between them making a BCS, because you know what? Pittsburgh is going to be halfway decent, have nothing to gain yep. except knocked out the guys they hate most yep. out of the BCS. Wouldn't that be something? That'd be fun. Woo. That's going to be a great game for us. Yeah, to be good. Thanksgiving night at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh. And the Syracuse team will be three and four after tonight. The team that beat West Virginia, Virginia Tech, yeah. we're going to get a chance, of course, to see them next week. They've become a very interesting team. You look at their two losses against uh, against uh, Southern USC, California, was a yeah. big one, and then uh, losing to NC State. Both games, the Virginia Tech defense played well. That'll be exciting next week down in Atlanta against Beautiful Georgia Tech. downtown. I get yeah. to see my grandson Nicholas Lee and my granddaughter Sophia. There you go. Little plug. Shameless, so what? How's nice. Nicholas Lee doing? Good. Nicholas is the only. I got five granddaughters and one grandson. He's hello. Holding, he's holding the torch. He's holding. Maybe the torch. someday he'll win the regular player of the game. But oh. tonight goes to Rashid Marshall. Penalty markers down here, so hold the celebration. Marshall, 231 total yards. Only seven completions, but three of them for touchdowns. He is our Wrangler player of the game. Legal substitution, 12 men on the field, penalties decline. Officials are going down Third swinging down. tonight. Okay. As I said, Syracuse at three and four. They go back to the Dome to play Connecticut, Pittsburgh, then go to Temple and to Boston College. And really, their margin for error is very slim. I think a six and five Syracuse team, as you see Sports Center is coming up next, they'll talk about the undefeateds, the Hall of Fame nominees, and who can stop the honor roll Pats. And six and five is going to really bring into question what they do in the future with this program. So they're going to have to win them all seven and four and go to a bowl game. But the Mountaineers get the job done tonight. They are two and oh in the league. Improve their record to six and one. The number 14 team in the land wins by 21 points tonight. Guys, uh, you talked about West Virginia at the start, the start of the season as well. Obviously, they lost to Virginia Tech with what you saw tonight. Give me your uh, report card on them now. I don't think they'll lose another ball game. I think it looks like they can get into Pittsburgh unbeaten in the conference and a chance to go to BCS. I'm just disappointed they didn't play well enough to beat that Virginia Tech. In fact, what kills me is that Virginia Tech blocks the field goal, picks it up, and scores and beats them. A difference in the game. That was a difference in the game. The only thing I would say about West Virginia because of the lack of discipline with the penalties, they're going to get tested because everyone's going to tell them that they're going to go 10 and 1. They go on the road a few in a few of these games. They're going to, we'll find out what kind of character this team has because anytime you're patted on the back and just told, hey, you're done four games, the last four games, you're going 10 and 1, sometimes that really challenges the leadership of a football team. Safe travels to Raleigh for college game Thank day. You. Yeah. You too, see you at 10 30 a.m. Eastern. And we'll see you next week in Atlanta for Georgia Tech, Virginia Tech. West Virginia wins by 21. Hey, ESPN News, we're going over there for the post-game extra. Looking forward to that. With Lee Kirk, Jill, I'm Mike. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Sports Center with Stuart Scott and Susie Culver comes up after the break as we say so long from Morgantown.